Never mind. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. Yo, what is going down, y'all? Welcome in the most underrated podcast you already know. Broadcasting from most underrated studios, I'm your man Thomas the Franchise. Hell yeah! Homie Dow Palantonio chilling across from me. Fellas, how are we doing, man? Decade show. Sorry, my bad. I didn't have the cord plugged in. First uh, first show of the decade, man. How you guys feeling? Tired. Yeah, are you? Yeah. <laughs> did you uh, did you do something, anything crazy for New Year's? or? Uh, nothing too crazy, man. Uh, hit the uh, quality Italian restaurant down in Cherry Creek. Uh, did, so we didn't actually go downtown, which is nice, right? Because it's a bitch down there. You know what I mean? Amateur hour all day. Right. It smells like liquor. It smells like makeup and, yeah. and like uh, CK1. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? In these streets. Yes. However, Cherry Creek. Man, everybody was fancy down there. Everybody's in tuxes and wearing nice shit. Not me, dude. Supreme zip up the new hoodie Robin got me oh, for yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Christmas. The jacket, yeah, backwards the hat. Lube joint. Backwards hat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looks you, like looks like it just got off work. Yeah. Looks like you just got done changing out some uh, air filters. Air filters for sure. Nice. Cabin filters on the inside. Air filters on the outside. Nice. Love it, man. So we had a great dinner, dude. Uh, damn, we dropped. And this isn't this isn't a, a flex by any means, but oh, it's fine. You just sold your house, so I, <laughs> I think I think we dropped like one sixty on dinner. Wow, dude. really? New yeah. Year's Eve, huh? We we had a lot. It was good, but I don't know, man. Damn, the big time New Year's Eve dinner. Yeah, and we were at home, relaxing, in pajamas. Not me. I don't wear pajamas. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm 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 lights out with the boxer, just flop and flop. Gross. Just flopping no TMI. NBA. <laughs> TMI. And then Robin, however, is in her PJs. Not so good. So we're at home in our PJs by 9.15. That was my night. Nice. Oh, so you guys were home yeah, oh, yeah. pretty good. Oh, yeah. Before 10. Shit. Yeah, dude. We uh, we had a Red Lobster gift card. Oh, sick. So we took advantage of that. Didn't go uh, in. Just went into the curbside pickup. Oh, ordered what we want online. Picked it up. Took it back to the crib. And, uh, dude, we got in a loop, bro. We're on the morning show. Apple TV. Yeah, Apple Plus. I mean, give this man a hand, bro. How good is it? It is. Uh, we just so I registered for the free trial. Love it. We knocked out ten episodes within the free trial. Yeah, I just canceled the free trial yesterday. Not gonna get charged at all. Uh-huh. Consumed all the content within the within the week. And uh, dude, it's awesome. Great the show. show is. You're hooked, you're hooked after the first episode, and you're really hooked after the second episode. I agree. That second episode, you're just so hooked. Yeah. And then from there, yeah, it's crazy, dude. Very crazy. I love thanks it, dude. For the, uh, thanks for the recommendation. The oop. Yeah, that was good. No problem, man. Have you seen that at all? No, I'm going to get into it. I'm finishing up Snowfall oh, okay. season two right now. So you did Once take that's ad- done. You did take advantage of your yeah. trial, right? I We're, signed up, but it's a year free. So yeah, because yeah, you get the 11 soon. Pro, dog. You get a free year. Right, right. So that's sick. right. That's oh. right. Time to upgrade, dog. See, I'm not on the, I'm not on the free. But no, I don't need to upgrade because I just consume the whole thing, the whole first season for free. That's well, all you, that's all you need is that show, right? Yeah, yeah, that's all I needed. And you get to use R11 Pros all the time. Yeah, so you're yeah. good to go. <laughs> yes, I get the quality of your guys, your guys' devices. Uh, did you do anything for New Year's, Jill? Just spent time with the family, man. We had a little party at the house. Oh, so nice little get guys together. Guys together with family, nothing crazy. I don't ever go out on New Year's. So right, right. Any uh, any resolutions for you guys? Anything you're looking to improve on going into this year? Anything you're looking to leave? In 2019, I'll go ahead and go first, or if or either of you, any of you, none. I know we didn't talk about this before the show. Sorry, guys, I, I didn't know uh, we had to prep it down to the inch. Now, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I t- for for me, um, I think obviously trying to be an entrepreneur and uh, a better manager of the business in which we have and what we started last year. You know, I'd like to see us obviously get more merch out, different types of merchandise. Um, you know, just have our business kind of. A multi-level type mm-hmm. of business, you know, uh, doing a bunch of different things. Um, obviously, being a content creator, I'd, I'd like to help out more with that, uh, editing stuff, learning more stuff. Um, I, I think, think you are, too. Yeah. I think that's what we were just talking about that before the show. Our new sneaker videos, all the new sneaker reviews we've been doing, which if you guys have not been up on that, man, you're missing out. It's a, it's quick, short-form content. Through each review is under five, six minutes. Uh, great on feats, great quality, audio sounds good, lighting's good, very good looks at the sneakers. Uh, we've all been doing that together as a team instead of just me you know, right. banging out the content. And it's been awesome because I feel like not only are you a little bit more invested when you see that hit YouTube, you're like, oh man, I helped create that. But also, I think the product is way better because sure. there's 
there's there's all of us working on it. You Everybody's know what I mean? Put their mind yeah. together. For yeah, it. we can kind of pick each other up in the in the short some of the shortcomings, whether that be audio, whether that be lighting, whether that be sneakers, whatever. So I think uh, I'm really enjoying the new videos and the new the new format. Yeah, same as here well. for sure. As sure. well, so I think that's fun. But yeah, man, I think that speaks to that. I'm really excited to where the reviews are going this year. Um, for me, it was interesting. I I was listening to the Drake interview, and I was talking to you guys a little bit about that. Uh, I was going running that back, and I haven't gotten all the way through it yet. But there was a part in there which really sat with me, and it was he he was talking about appreciating the point where nobody knows who you are or very few people know who you are, or, um, yeah, I guess just appreciating that part of the struggle and of coming up in whatever you're doing and just being more appreciative of that because you can never get that back. You can never take a step back to that point. Once people know who you are, it's over. Once you're Drake, once you're so-and-so, once you have a big name, that's it. You can never go back. And he says he wishes he would have appreciated that more when people were hungry for his music and when people were hungry to find out who this guy was instead of like, oh, Drake's dropping another product project. Oh, let's see what this is. 10 trash can emojis three minutes after I drop it. you know. And he's just kind of talking about that whole thing. And that made me think, damn, we're kind of in that same process at the at the moment mm -hmm. we're in the come up phase we're in the being discovered phase we're in the phase where there's a lot of people that know about us that are keeping us to themselves you selfish bastards <laughs> spread the damn word no i'm just kidding but uh it's true though a lot of people like you it. more we've all done it yeah with yeah music or... yeah with music whatever when you know about something and you think it's super dope you keep that shit to yourself you kind of mm -hmm. just oh man, I want to know about this guy. I want to be up on this. I want to be the guy, or you want to be the guy to put people on. But then after, after you put people on, you put your homies on, and then now the rest of the world's on, or a bunch of other people are on, all of a sudden it's not cool to be on anymore. Or it's not. So then you have a whole second wave of battling that. And we talked about that. Like our, the people that rock with this show are pretty much supportive of the show, which is awesome. And you know, they, they have our backs for people that aren't supportive of the show. For down to the live chat, to the YouTube comments, whatever. But there may be a point where our section just looks like Kaisa's and it's wrecked and it's just a bunch of hate. And it's just, <laughs> I hate you. You suck. Why are you doing this still? Why are you still making videos? Why are you still uploading? It seems so miserable. Right, yeah. right. And I think we need to appreciate this now this a time. little bit more than maybe we are. Uh, or maybe just me. This is just me personally, not we. Um, I need to appreciate it a little bit more because maybe that will not be as fun or that will not be as... Uh, I mean, I guess be able to make some money would be fun, but that'd be cool. Doing, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I said a lot to to say that. Yeah, so that's enjoy kinda, enjoy the time that we're in right now and yeah. the community that we've built and having a lot of positivity and so a lot of people trying to, do, trying to yeah. build us up, you know, which is great. Well, I I told you guys, I don't know if I told the audience, but uh, dude, I I just purchased a book and uh, I was going to give you a little update on this. So I purchased the book. I used to be a miserable fuck. Yes. Every man's guide to meaningful <laughs> life. Did you start reading it yet? So yes, here's here's what I have out of it, right? So this book obviously gives you a bunch of different unique perspectives, right? Yeah. Um, kind of balancing, losing balance, um, you know, obviously epiphanies, perspectives. Those are a lot of hot words, right? When you get out of this book. And yeah. I tell you, so far, I believe that reading, starting reading this book and then by the time I'm done with it, I'm going to end up a whole different person. At least with just balancing perspectives, you know, just kind of ideas and thoughts. Um, yeah, I'd recommend it to anybody. I, I don't think he's a true expert, but I think it's very transparent. I think there's a lot of different um, perspectives uh, that it offers. Uh, and that's even for kids, for moms, for dads, for, you know, single adults, whatever it is. Um, yeah, I think it's perspective bending so far so is what you. I would say. You're going to try not to be a miserable fuck in 20. That's what I'm going to try, 20. man. Yeah, I think I think these last like six months, I, I love what I'm doing. I love the fun stuff that we're able to do and create creativity and just whatever. I love buying shoes. We buy a lot of shoes. Right, right. I think that's fun, right? Yeah. But I think from the personal perspective, uh, in terms of growth, I, I'm more negative than positive. And, uh, you know, I don't want to be that way for my partner, Robin. Uh, I don't want to be that way for the pups uh, because I think I think animals can pick up on that shit. Yeah, you yeah, know, probably. call me call me a weirdo, but uh, no, they definitely feel, they sense energy. They sense that shit. They for know sure, the energy, dude, yeah. for sure. Um, so yeah, man, I just on the personal level, dude, when I'm not connecting with you fools, when I'm at work, because I, it's and it's not that it's a front, but when I go home, you know, I'm kind of miserable, and Robin gets a lot of that, unfortunately. Mm. So I don't want to be that way, man, anymore. Gotcha. So if it's a book, if it's weed, if it's CBD, if it's high fives from Jalal, the producer. Shit, I'm all in. Hell yeah. Hell yeah!
help me through this. So like that's any, where I'm at. Any hippie hippie stuff in the book? Oh yeah, there's hippie stuff there's for hippie sure. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. How, how are you liking that? I don't know. Like the whole <laughs> shit. Like you are. I think the best thing I could say with hippie shit is you kind of are what you eat. I believe that. Okay. So if you're eating some bullshit like me, pastries, donuts, yeah, Red Bulls. Oh yeah, I feel like shit. I am a sh- I am a piece of shit. So I, I think it starts there. I think there's a lot of like mind stuff and and like your 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 stomach, your cortisol, all this stuff. I think it all kind of does connect. Gut health, mind health, one and the same. Dude, that, yeah, no, I've been that. having some gut like problems lately. Yeah, I just just stomach pain. Not like I got oh, shit or nothing. I was gonna say, <laughs> is that why we get started late on the cast today? <laughs> no, it's my fault. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Pre cast dump. No nah, man, it's just it's just like. I know they're connected. There's got to be something. Oh, like yeah. I'm just putting a lot of stuff off, I think, like for the new year. Yeah. You asked um, yesterday, man. I just woke up and I was like, man, I got I got to do all this stuff that I've been putting off. Mm-hmm. Like I, I took all my shoes. I pictured them up trying to sell some yeah, shoes. Yeah, I know. I Dude, got you rid brought, of like all you, my old You brought clothes. in a ton, of, uh, a ton of shoes here to the studio. We're working. We're filming reviews yesterday. Me and Dal Jalal rolls in with this stack of shoes. And I thought, I was like, oh, you know, this fool come in here. Dal goes, did you come in here just to flex? <laughs> All your kicks on the off-white uh, rug, rug on the wet grass tray. <laughs> so I was like, no, fool, I'm selling uh, I'm selling all these and he legit brought a stack in and he just took all these pictures yeah. of all these shoes he was selling and that was like damn it might have been kind of tight though if you would have just brought in all your shoes take a ton of on feets and then you got on feets for the month right. <laughs> you're just ready to go on deck like you got all your flicks for instagram That's or whatever hilarious. i'm on that preparation mind right now dude First it is year. such a job people that don't do it don't understand oh, like dude it's too the much gr- to, to grow it is a straight up job like yeah. it is so much man you know who does understand my man john king he started trying to record and vlog a lot <laughs> yeah. of stuff, and he literally said, he's like, oh, man, I got jobs, I got families, I got kids, man, there ain't no way I got yeah. time for this, you know what I mean? It, it, it takes a lot of time. Right. It really no, it does. totally it totally does, man. Um, so that's what that's kind of what I'm, I'm looking forward to. Good to hear on yours. Yeah. You uh, with the growth. I mean, you, you're taking the trip, so I think that's going to help cleanse you. I'm going I on need, vacation. Yeah, I need a break, dude. Talk about that. Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to Cancun, so I yeah, figured I'd take, take advantage of the time that you were going to be on the cruise. We're going to be have some downtime on the cast. Nice. So I was like, let me just get a trip in. You taking your family, your mom, your dad? Whoa. Nah, I'm just going with a, yeah. I'm with a lady friend. Lady friend, nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Nice. That's cool, man. Boners and bo- board shorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a, my that's my vacation. Man. Really? You know what? You guys suck, man, actually. You know what I'm happy for you guys, actually. But uh, you know what, what I'm doing? Do? Well, you guys are gone. I'm fulfilling honeydew lists. I'm redoing the kitchen yet again to to tie up some loose ends there, and we're reformulating the whole like bottom level bathroom. We're oh. doing we're doing new vanities, new mirrors, new sinks, new hardware. Like we're probably gonna put a new shitter in for God's sakes. What the Damn. hell? Really? I'm trying to get boners and board shorts, <laughs> <laughs> and here I am doing handy work. Carve out a little time. Maybe, uh, well, maybe on the weekend. Maybe to have some sexual relations with Robin, but that's probably about it. There you, <laughs> you go. Guys get a little weekend getaway. Get a little relations involved. Maybe yeah. go, maybe go snowboard. I don't some know. Hot springs or something. That'd be sick. Yeah, it's all right, you, guy. You should take you should take some time. Like we should all just take a little break before I know we the should, new year man. or before the uh, you know we get going. I've yeah. already I've already booked mine. I got my break booked. Yeah, you're the only one. I know. I'm going to continue to be a miserable effort you if, I fi- if I don't get it together. <laughs> you better figure it out, bro. <laughs> you better figure it out. Some help. Uh, thank you to everybody that is in the chat, man. Welcome in if you were just joining the show. We got uh, a ton of topics for you guys today. This is the last show before we'll be missing three shows, dude. We don't, uh, we're going to be missing both Monday and Thursday next week, and I don't get back till Monday. I don't think Jalal gets back to the following Wednesday. So the yep. next time we'll be popping on, you guys, I think will be the 16th. Is that right? What do, you, what do you think? Should we do like a, a rebroadcast or something? I'm Some gonna have uh, I'm gonna have tons of sneaker content. Okay. So there'll be sneaker videos dropping pretty regularly, like every couple two or three days, because I'll have all those edited on the ship. Of we have two more on top of the two we just shot yesterday that we're shooting tomorrow. So we're gonna have we'll have sneaker videos ready to go. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sneaker vids on deck. So that'll be good. Um, I may try to clip together uh, a best of show. Just some 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 segments. Okay. Um, try to clip that together while I'm on the plane or on the cruise, stuff like that. We'll see how it goes. I've never been on a cruise, so I don't know. That Wi-Fi you know. to upload will probably be hard to find. <laughs> right, it's take right. Forever. Around the middle of nowhere. You know, you know what's crazy on a cruise is I remember when I went on, dude. So the people that uh, the work on cruises, like your waiters and wait staff and all that, dude, you actually have the same individual like for like eighty percent of your cruise. 
And this individual, whether it's a man or, or, or a woman, doesn't matter. Do they start remembering your name? They remember like your favorite drinks. They remember, they remember your favorite activities. Dude, it gets really intense, man. And I'll tell you what, be prepared to spend some money. Really? Because these fools be going to be bringing out your favorite shots. They're going to be bringing out your favorite beers. They're going to be, oh, dude, it's, it's a great time, man. Enjoy. We uh, Shout out to my man. Thank you to my man, Mueller. Uh, Mueller that comes on, talks to UFC with us occasionally. Came through today, slid through the studio for the first time, came to check it out, and he brought us two of these PAX devices mm. so we could smuggle Dro onto the cruise. Because, uh, wow. you know, your boy doesn't really drink a ton. So, That's true. Uh, thank you to Mueller, man, for making sure I can live with uh, these devices. So I'm going to go pick up some cartridges for those. And uh, we'll be we'll be cruising. Just don't end up in uh, jail in Mexico. In Mexico. Yeah, you don't want to do that, man. No, yeah, it's not. That's why we're not bringing the flower. I don't know if we can make it down there to bail you out. We can do a show from there. <laughs> we can do a remote. Live from the from the Mexico, the jail. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Just come down there, guy. Yeah. Just do a, do a live, <laughs> a live uh, remote. I don't want nothing to do with the Mex- Mexico jails, man. I'm out. Con Lee, $2 donation for the cruise. Thank you, bro. Nice. Appreciate it, man. Dow, you were at, you had the hot hand last show. Let me uh let's see what you got. Oh, he tries to take it get take it to continue. A little too hard. Takes the L. Couldn't get it to continue. It's all good. Um speaking of talking about weed and everything like that on the cruise, did you see that uh Illinois legalized weed and they just started selling weed New Year's Day? Dang, yesterday, huh? So shout out to Illinois, man. Shouts out to those guys. You guys are having you guys are getting legal weed out there. Yeah. All, all the people in the shy. We gotta let her souls know. We gotta let Jay Brown know out there. Yeah. I heard the lines were immaculate yesterday, dude. What do you mean? The like the lines to buy weed? No lines at all. Oh, dude, there was a shitload. Then that's not immaculate. <laughs> that's where I'm confused by your terminology. Oh, yeah. Immaculately huge. How about that? I don't <laughs> no? So there was just big lines. The big lines line. were insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully some of these people get out of Colorado and head to head to the shy. Then dude, I just saw Ted. The, the the I don't know if it's I don't know if we're getting on a shortage. I don't know if it's the amount of people coming to Colorado, but I don't buy my weed from dispensaries anymore here. Because the flour is just shitty and dry and it's just not it's corporate, I want corporate that weed. dense, sticky. I'm not trying to have the dry, crispy crumble. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to have that sticky, icky, icky. The dry stuff, that's that's high school weed. You're right. right. I remember those Ditch days. Weed. That's yeah. what I feel like I'm getting from the dispensaries a lot of the time. So I just saw Ted tweet out, I'm gonna, I might be flying to Seattle to buy my weed from now on. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, like, might be, I like the accent. I might, I might have to uh, get on my man Ted's train and have him, you know, I'll try, pay him a little How is he fee. going to do that? I you don't know. I don't back. know. But dude, I'm going to tell you this. I was traveling with my guy Merck to Philadelphia a couple years ago. And uh, that dude threw an ounce of weed in a glass jar in in his suitcase. We went, we got to Philly. He opened up his suitcase. There was a note in there that said, your bag has been searched from like the airport or whatever. Mm -hmm. Weed was chilling right next to the note. (laughs) Everything was fine. And nothing, dude. Flew there and home. I think it depends which airport. Like uh, I heard like DIA or LAX, they they don't care. They don't make it a priority for weed. Really? Yeah, they're just searching. Because I looked at it like, wait. If you're searching my man's bag, what are you guys searching for? If you didn't take the drugs, like they're yeah, only searching harder, for, yeah, like drugs. explosives and bombs and shit or so mm. we didn't find any of those in here. We didn't find a pistol. So yeah, here you go on your way with the, with the ounce of weed. And yeah. that's what I'm saying. It wasn't a joint. It wasn't like a couple, an eighth. Yeah. It was an ounce, a yeah. full jar, ounce of weed. And he just like nothing, just took it right to Philly, uh, home, had a huh. couple homies, no issues. I've taken like my, just my weed pen and shit to vegas but i never had any issues that that's yeah. real simple that's kind of like this shit what we're doing here it's i take easy. my cbd pen and i get a little freaked out <laughs> of course you do <laughs> <laughs> i could t- i could i could see you getting the anxiety yeah. the immaculate anxiety yeah so then i gotta take more <laughs> cbd for the anxiety that i have a carry in the cbd <laughs> um so yeah Too shout much. out shout out to uh illinois for for legalizing weed do you have info on that? What, uh, what does their shit go to? Like, you know how ours goes to schools? Do you know any of that info? Yeah, so uh, I think you got to start it off with this, right? Taxation. How does Which that Which ours isn't, by the way. My aunt's a teacher, and she constantly <laughs> bitches about that. She's like, yeah. we're not getting uh, 69% of the funding or whatever they said it was going to go into the schools. So, uh, 
I don't think things are going the way they should over here in Colorado. No, it doesn't sound like it. So check this out. So uh, there's a couple different taxations on marijuana. So there is a graduated tax set up for recreational marijuana. Here's what it is. Marijuana and cannabis infused products with less than 35% THC will be taxed at 10% of the purchase price. Cannabis infused products with more than 35% THC will be taxed at 20% of the purchase price. Mm. So obviously the different uh, you know percentages of strength Obviously, you know, double the taxes, which is crazy. Marijuana with more than 35% THC will be taxed at 25% at the purchase price. So a lot of taxation. It sounds like it's going uh, recreational marijuana um, is going obviously more to the city. Anything from state funding, uh, education funding programs is what they say. Um, but, you know, you know how that is. Uh, and then it goes along with, um, you know, will I be able to smoke wherever I want? Absolutely not. These laws don't change from Colorado to Illinois to uh, to Las Vegas, for example, or, or Nevada. You're not able to smoke in a public place. Um, consu- consumption is only in private uh, areas or offices will be same legal. Same as here, yeah. Yeah, same thing, right? Um, so be aware of that. Adults... 21 and over obviously can purchase legally uh, in Illinois. January 1st of 2020 is when this was inundated. Um, outside of that, um, you know, who will be selling marijuana? So existing medical marijuana cultivators, dispensaries, um, you know, until new licenses are approved. Um, outside of March 15th, uh, they're, they're going to have new regulations and new dispensary licenses um, that will be starting. So Illinois is very, very new to this. This is all stuff that Colorado and some of these other places have already dealt with. But, uh, you know, uh, good luck with the money going where it's supposed to go. Because as we learned in Colorado, not quite the yeah, case. Yeah, issues with that, yeah. We yeah. are, uh, so Illinois, become, Illinois becomes the 11th state to legalize marijuana with obviously more to come. Yeah. I mean, I think we'll see more probably next year. And I think we're going to continue to see that number rise mm-hmm. as older people die. It, you know, it is what it is. I think people ages 65 and over uh, have been polled as the least likely to vote for passing marijuana yeah. while these PS, these people start dying. I mean, no one younger than that is really opposing it. And now for the first time, the majority of Republicans at 56% oh, wow. are for marijuana. So I think it's just a matter of time, dude. Dude, in the last five years, that has to be a pretty big swing. Right. I would say. Right? Republicans? It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be interesting. 65% of U.S. adults right now um, say marijuana should be legal. And that's currently. So like I said, as people die and as as we continue to go, it's going to be federally legal. It's going to be legal on all levels as it should be. Uh, I mean, if if alcohol is legal, let's be real. I think my personal opinion, having used them both, I think alcohol is 10 times more dangerous than weed. Mm-hmm. 10 times more dangerous in every instance from driving to being out and about to um, the overdose op- opportunity there. I, I think it's just alcohol is way worse. Mm-hmm. That's Maybe that's just me, but that's how I feel. Um, let's move into the unfortunate news of David Stern passing. Yeah. We found out that he had... Um, been rushed to the hospital what like a week ago mm-hmm. or something like that uh, yeah just before holidays like right, right. Uh, middle of December or yep. something, something I remember that. that he was rushed to the hospital and he has unfortunately passed away from a brain hemorrhage yeah crazy yeah three weeks ago is when he first got uh, okay. hospitalized okay yeah. Yeah. so a few weeks yep uh, sad stuff man a legacy big time legacy what 30 30 plus years mm-hmm. as NBA commissioner uh, at I, per, I like Adam Silver a little bit better. I think Adam Silver is better for today's game and today's player. Yeah. I wasn't the biggest David Stern fan, but that doesn't mean I'm going to diminish what he did. Right. Obviously, he took the league from, I don't want to say obscurity, but he took the league wasn't near near where it was. No, there was a lot of debt. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the franchises were in debt. The league itself was not a money maker by any means. Um, I think obviously he obviously helped with the major franchise expansion and also helped to globalize the game. And that's what uh, led him to turn this into a multi billion dollar business, right? You know, he got China involved. You know, he got some of those foreign lands involved, obviously to globalize this. And dude, he was he was quintessential in allowing the WNBA. Allowing right. the women to have a platform, dude, which is super cool. I'm not a big WNBA fan. I don't know a lot about it. I don't follow a lot of it. But, dude, for the women to be able to have a platform and being able to show their true talents and abilities, this was on Stern, dude. This mm-hmm. was a part of Stern, which is really cool, man. We're talking about a guy that when he took over as NBA commissioner, mm-hmm. 
the NBA was a distant third in the sports Amer- American sports consensus on based off of the entertainment of the sport, how the league treated their players. Mm-hmm. This was all kind of taken into effect, uh, taken into account, and. The NBA, like you said, not doing very well. Also, the finals were on tape delay. Can you believe that? The NBA finals, the the series that decides the championship in the NBA was on tape delay? Hmm. Are you nuts? So if you're not there, the only the only major sport where the finals was not live. That's crazy. Or the last the final game, the final series wasn't live. Yep. Yeah, NBA still on tape delay when he took over. So obviously he made a huge push into that. Larry Bird and Magic Johnson had a lot to do with that when they came into the NBA there. But um yeah, crazy. Just crazy stuff. Yeah. Check this out. So uh with just television revenue, so during his thirty year uh 30 years in office, I guess you'd say, until his retirement in 2014, the player's salary cap grew from $3.6 million to just under $59 wow. million, dude, in that short time, while television uh, revenues jumped from around $22 million to about $930 million within those 30 years, dude, of his tenure. Um, and franchise values went from $400 million to $19 billion when Stern retired. Look at wow. what he did for revenue. Oh, no shit. I mean, he. T- I mean, oh shit! This fool rolled up his sleeves and got to work, dog. Yeah, that's incredible. My numbers, man. He also put. I feel like David Stern also put superstars in a position to be superstars. Mm-hmm. The NBA didn't really have any star power before David Stern took over. He's the one that allowed uh, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, obviously Michael Jordan, to be what they became, and allowed him to kind of carry the brand and be the face of the brand instead of just being the NBA is the NBA, mm-hmm. Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, these faces became the face of the NBA. Kind of like we've talked about WWE, what they're doing with their wrestlers. It's right. the opposite. Vince is trying to, they, they was always about the faces. It was about Hulk Hogan. It was about Andre the Giant, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock. Vince is trying to do the opposite. He's trying to erase that and make mm-hmm. it about WWE. Mm-hmm. That was all about NBA, and David Stern is the one that reversed that and made it about the player, yeah. about the superstar. He's the one that really developed the superstar because you only got five guys on the court. They're playing both ways. It's a lot easier to have superstars. And by, when, by the time Jordan came in, Jordan was larger than life. Oh, yeah. But I don't think he could have still been what he was without David Stern really believing in him, really giving him his blessing and saying, kind of do what you want, Michael, and carry this the way you want to carry it. And I don't think if it wasn't for a guy like David Stern, Jordan wouldn't able to be been able to get off the way he did. I don't think. Yeah, that's crazy. I remember a short time. Uh, do you remember going back to Magic Johnson when he uh, came out and said he, yes. he had AIDS? We talked about that on this day. That's yeah, yeah. So Stern was uh, Stern was a big advocate of Magic Johnson. Number one, right? Because he's a big money maker for Stern in the NBA, obviously. But what's interesting about that situation was Stern obviously really stood, uh, and the NBA stood behind uh, Magic Johnson in 1997, and then months later he also supported Magic Johnson's return to the league, dude. So it was interesting because Stern not only cared about his his league and his players, but he also cared about kind of helping and addressing the social issues, right? At that time, dude, in 97, People thought that you would you could contract AIDS by shaking somebody's hand, right? Touching someone, spitting, sharing a straw, whatever. So this yeah. was huge when Stern, being a huge advocate with the NBA, allowing him to come back into the league and saying, "Hey, look, we're addressing social issues by this. You can't get AIDS this way." And obviously, just give, giving the public more information on a disease that was very, very scary and that not a lot of people knew about, right? Mm-hmm. So just giving Jordan a platform to be the best, giving you know, the players platforms of respect, humility. Remember the dress code stuff? Yes, yes. Dude, Stern was the guy right. who arguably um, you know, brought the dress code as... Um, as as a, as a formality here, and you know he was very tough with his disciplinary decisions, I believe as well. But the dress code really, really upended a lot of the players at that time. If you I remember that. that, dude. Yeah, everyone was wearing the huge baggy hip hop shit, the headbands, like all and, kinds, and of, the shit was all custom tailored right. too, which we don't even realize. It's like, what you got that? That's tailored to right. you. Right, shit was baggy as hell, no doubt. But you know, yeah, very uh, very interesting, man. Um, so R.I.P. to David Stern. Yeah. I uh, definitely a legend in the game, and I didn't know a face of the game. That just shows you how quick, dude. 
Yeah. So he was he was inducted into the Naismith uh, Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame and the Sports Broadcasting Hall of Fame in 2014, and then the International Basketball Hall of Fame in 2016. Wow. So accolades. you know he did get his accolades and props as well. So um, and a very very smart guy. I believe he uh, he graduated uh, from like some law uh, university. I can't even remember uh, what it was, but you know very very smart guy. Did a lot for the league for sure. Rest in peace. Um, I was going to catch up on, uh, yeah, shout out to everybody in the chat, man. I was going to go down the list, but I want to keep it moving here. Um, Jalal, did you see that, the comment on Zelha? Huh? Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I wrote it down. I'm going to check it out. RJ Ryan? I think, well, that's just like a go city Go to Zelha in, in Cancun. Or I have no idea. maybe it's a food spot. I didn't look it up. Has to be, because Neighborhood said, I didn't enjoy Zelha as much as Explore. Actually, so, this guy's this? been there. Where? In Cancun? It's, yep. It's called Shellha. Oh, Shellha is how it's pronounced. XCL actually, when you're there. Okay. So what Shellha is is it's almost like think of it like an outdoor water park for like grownups. Oh, so you're not going to see necessarily the slides and shit, but you're going to see places like uh, you know that you can dive uh, into safely. That you're you know that are organized and like almost like floating rivers. It, obviously, uh -huh. you're in the ocean. Um, you can go snorkeling and all this stuff. So it's kind of this wa like adult water park. Think of it but that it's way. It's like a closed off area. Yeah, okay, man. Cool. Yeah, man. You can swim with dolphins and shit. And oh, pay extra to do a, uh, a couple extra things outside of the park there. But yeah, Shell, Shell Ha is cool, man. It's, uh, you know, we also did the ruins in Tulum. You know, got to go see those from the Mayans. To, we were trying to go there and, and stay there, but it was just like you got to take a two hour ride from the yeah. airport. And totally. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, we had to take a bunch of shuttles. We did all inclusive resorts. We just take shuttles from the resorts to, you know, wherever you're heading. But uh, they got some Jeep tours that are pretty bad. That pretty badass dude some you know off-roading stuff you can do there's a, there's a lot of stuff dude cool. but i'll get some bring, recommendations from you then bring your singles though dude yeah. you fools <laughs> going to mexico bring your singles because i gotta tell you man if you want extra liquor you want to be taken care of throw a couple That's singles it. down every time dude yeah. I, I was. I thought you were gonna take it somewhere else with that, but nah, 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 <laughs> nah, glad, nah, nah. That's where you nah just to get the better treatment make sure okay. to bring those singles man and they'll take care of you do you guys um we're going to sprinkle in some decade talk throughout the show today just because we kind of uh, we just wrapped up that decade and we didn't get into everything we wanted to hit on the last show. It was just so packed full of content. So let's do this really quickly. Before we go into on this day, let's hit on the best and worst teams of the 2010s. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Should we start with... Hmm. Let's start with the... Uh, let's start with the best. You want to start with the best? Actually, let's start with the worst. Start with the worst guy. And I'm just this is Yahoo. Yahoo compiled this list of the top 10 on each side. Mm -hmm. 20 uh, starts at number 10, Jacksonville Jaguars. Record since 2010, 50 and 109. Four coaches. <laughs> Most recent winning season, 2017, where they went to the AFC Championship. Remember? Okay. And they looked like they were going to contend. They got beat, beat by Brady and the Patriots. That's but right. It was a great AFC championship game. They hung in there tough. They played tough. That was the most recent, obviously the most uh, recent postseason appearance as well. So winning season and postseason appearance 2017. Uh, let's see. San Diego Padres, 739 and 881 since 2010. Two different managers. Mm -hmm. Most recent winning season, 2010, the beginning of the decade. Most recent postseason appearance, they haven't had one since 06. Didn't even get one in the decade. Oh, jeez. Padres, awful. Moving along, Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, coming in at number eight, 59 and 100 mm. since 2010. Five different coaches. Most recent winning season, 2016. Last playoff appearance for Tampa Bay. Can you guess them this was? Uh, Tampa Bay, uh, 2005. 2007. Damn it. I thought they were in it in this decade for some reason. I guess not. Huh. Tampa Bay. No good, no playoff appearances in this decade. Number seven, Chicago White Sox, 743 and yeah. 876. Three different managers. Most recent winning season, 2012. They didn't make it in the postseason in this decade. Last time they got there, 08. Was that with Frank Thomas? <laughs> yeah, 08. <laughs> the big hurt. The uh, big hurt. Washington Redskins come in at number six, 62 and 96 and one. Two head coaches, only two coaches since 2010 on the Redskins? Well, I could believe that, yeah. Mike Jay Sh Gruden and uh, Shanahan. Mike Shanahan? Yeah. That's it, huh? Wow. That surprises me. Most recent postseason appearance, 2015. Look at that. Okay. Uh, number five, 
Oakland Raiders. Ugh. 2010, or since 2010, they have a record of 63 and 96, a, a .396 winning percentage. <laughs> Five head coaches since 2010. Awful. Most recent winning season, 2016, which is the same as their most recent postseason appearance. That was also 2016. And uh, they're leaving the dump in Oakland. And they're going to, they'll be the Las Vegas Raiders. So hopefully a fresh start for them next year. The vague Raiders. Raider Nation. Number four, Miami Marlins. I knew they'd be on this list. 707 and 911 since 2010. Five managers. Uh, most recent winning season, 2009. Most recent postseason appearance, 03. Is that when they won the World Series? Uh, it'd have to be, yes. Damn. Uh -huh. That's, uh, wow. Marlins been out of it. Top three. Here we go. Top three, Sacramento Kings, 287 and 517, mm. six coaches, no winning season since 06, no postseason appearances since 06. Is there any fans left in Sacramento? Who, who cares about the Kings? <laughs> Let's be real. It's not a raucous fan base. They're basically the same as the LA Chargers over there. Awful. Uh, New York Knicks. Is this, I hate to do this. Yeah. Because I just copped the Knicks Jordan ones this year and they're great. Mm -hmm. The New York Knicks, is there any more overrated franchise in sports? Is there a more overrated, less winning team than the Knicks? The Knicks, 324 and 480 since 2010. Mm. Five head coaches, most recent winning season 2013, postseason appearance 2013. They come in at number two. I would have probably put them at one, but guess who's number one? Mm. They just fired their GM. Oh, damn it. I was going to say the New York Mets, so it's not those. Um, Just fired uh, the Brown, Browns. You got it. Yeah. You got it. The, there you the are. The steaming pile of the brown poop. Cleveland Browns, 42 <laughs> and 116. Six coaches since 2010. Wow. Most recent winning season, 07. Most recent postseason appearance, 2002. Are you kidding me? I didn't. You know what? 2002 surprises me. Wow. Browns have not made a postseason appearance since 02. They haven't had a winning season since 07. Six head coaches since 2010 with a 42, 116, and 1 record. Who was their quarterback in 2002? I bet we don't know, though. Oh, my gosh. There's no dude. way to know. 2002. I can't, even, I can't even think who the quarterback is at that time, man. How about Vinny Testaverde? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> he played for like 12 teams. Plagued by botched draft picks, impulsive, impulsive coaching changes, and chronic front office dysfunction, yeah. the Browns staggered their way to an NFL worst record in the 2010 season. Seven times they won five or fewer games in the season, including an 0-16 mark in 2017, an unthinkable feat in the salary cap era. Most crippling was the Browns' inability to identify a franchise quarterback. Prior to picking Baker Mayfield first overall in 2018, the list includes Manziel. previous quarterbacks John Manziel, mm -hmm. Brandon Whedon, Colt McCoy, and Deshaun Kaiser, all taken Deshaun in the 2010s. Kaiser. Dude. Damn, I forgot all about that name. All taken in the 2010s. How That's... crazy. So there you go. No, 10 to 1. Brutal. Cleveland Browns. So you can just kind of run down the list like that. Uh, yeah, no, I'll go a little quicker just so we can kind of get out of there. But uh, yeah, this is also Yahoo as well. And this this is the best uh, end of the decade, best pro teams of the 2010s. So let's start off with uh, number 10. We have Baltimore Ravens. We know the Ravens obviously uh, had a great defense. Their record since 2010 is 97 and 62, which is a .610 uh, winning percentage. Championships since 2010, which was won in 2012. Right. Oh, uh, they had a oh yeah. Yeah, okay. you remember that with uh, Ray Lewis yep, and the yep, whole crew. Yep. Um, playoff appearance since 2010, they've had six. Oh, and nice. uh, their their most recent losing losing season, obviously, was here uh, just a few years ago, 2015. So uh, yeah. So you have Baltimore Ravens at number 10. At number nine, the some of the biggest disappointments for what they pay people. Los Angeles Dodger, Dodgers at number oh, nine. Oh, wow. Right? Record since 2010, 919 and 701. Good. Which is a .567 winning percentage. Championships since 2010. Fat goose egg, right? Uh, playoff appearances since 2010. Here's what make, here's what, it, this is awful. Seven. Oh, Still it's a goose egg, no, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Clayton um, Kershaw. Yeah, most recent losing season was 2010. I would arguably maybe disagree with some of those, but uh, via the record, 2010 was their worst. Um, if we look at number eight, we have Pittsburgh Penguins, record since 2010, 466 and 320, which is a .592. Two cups? Uh, 
Uh, they had two cups, yes. Two cups in this decade, so I thought. You got it. Nice. It was uh, 2016 Penguins. and 2017. Yeah, they're dominant. Are the two cups, yep. Uh, playoff appearances since 2010. Look at this dominant. Ten. Wow. So you want to talk about dominance in the playoffs. Sid the kid, dude. Sid the kid is the man. Uh, most recent losing season, though, was 26, uh, 2006. Excuse me. Uh, let's go with number seven. That is Chicago Blackhawks. Record since 2010, 437 and 349, mm. which is a .555 championship since 2010. How many do you think? Blackhawks. Uh, Pretty dominant, right, for a few years? I think a, I think a couple, too. Ah, almost. Three. Three you cups. had 2010, 2013, 2015. Wow. So okay. playoff appearances since 2010. Eight. So again, another dominant force within the playoff regime, right? Uh, most recent losing season was uh, 2018, Interesting. believe it or not. Uh, coming in at number six. Man, I love this team. Um, not a big fan now, but when they actually won, broke the curse, Boston Red Sox coming in at nice. number six, right? Record since 2010, 872. Be on there. Yeah, 872 and 748, which is a .53 win percentage. Championships since 2010. Should be pretty easy. How many? Uh, two. You got it. Yeah. Broke the curse 2013 and then 2018. No, they broke the curse before the decade. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's right. That's right. So that was... They, they broke the curse, dude. They they beat the... They, I think they broke the curse in 03 or 04, and then they beat the Rockies in 07. 04. Okay, so they broke the curse 04, 04 yep. beat the Rockies in 07, then they went in 13, and then uh, what? 18? Yes. Wow. That's pretty dominant. Two decades, dude. Mm-hmm. I was surprised by four this. Four World Series in two decades. Pretty, pretty Playoff shit. appearances since 2010, only four. That's interesting. I thought that was a little light. Wow, very yeah. interesting. So, uh, top five, top five. Yeah, no doubt. Top five, top, top, five, five. top five. We've got Seattle Seahawks coming in at number five. Record since 2010, 158 and one, which is a .628 win percentage. Uh, championship since 2010. This is confusing, right? Because you want to say two. But it's just one oh, because just one. obviously they didn't Russell run, Williams run the ball from the one. They didn't give it to Lynch. <laughs> That's what happened. Yeah, no doubt. So twenty two appearances. Yep, you got it. Uh, playoff appearances since twenty ten, quite a bit. Uh, let's let's do a snowman, a number eight there, and their most recent losing season was twenty eleven. Coming at number four. Is that when Pete Carroll got hired? I think he got hired in twenty ten. He did 20, 2010 to 2010. present. Yep, Pete Carroll. So that's all in the Carroll era. He just yeah. finished his. Uh, he just finished a decade with the Hawks. Crazy. That is crazy. All right, sorry. Go ahead. How much bubble gum do you think he's killed <laughs> during that time? <laughs> I was just wondering. He's killed some gum. <laughs> <laughs> he's killed a lot of gum. Uh, number four coming in uh, hot with the San Francisco Giants. Uh, record since 2010, 821 and 799, which is a point five zero six uh, championship since 2010. What Three. do you think? You got it. Yeah. 2010. 2012, 2014. Giants have been dominant, man. Yeah, dude, they dominant. have, man. Their pitching staff, dude, was just hardcore, dude, for years on years. You know what I mean? So, playoff appearances since 2010. This is a little light to me as well, I think, but four mm. is what we're seeing on that. Their most recent losing season, obviously, 2019. Are you uh, top two? Obviously, Golden State and the Patriots. Uh yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, number three. Let's say I haven't seen him on the yeah. list yet. We Come can't. On. We can't. We can't forget uh, the th number three though. San Antonio Spurs. Greg oh, Popovich okay. and his regime has just been incredible, right? Um, yeah, That's a sleeper. That's right there. You just always forget about the Spurs. That boring ass basketball. I know. But dude. They just win titles. Defense. Or they were wins they, they championships. Win yeah. That's what they did. What do they you know? have in the decade? How many titles? Uh, uh, they had actually uh, only one. Interesting. Yep. I guess they did a lot more dominance in the early 2000s. 2014 was their last one in the decade. Wow. But look at this. Playoff appearances since 2010? 10. Mm. So obviously dominant, right? Uh, they had a .695 winning percentage. Uh, that's, yeah, not enough to say. Not, not much else to say on that. Let's go with uh, number two, Golden State. Correct, 100%. Uh, 505 uh, wins, 299 losses. That's a .628 winning percentage. Uh, championships since 2010. Can you count them? Three. You got it. 2015, 17, and then, of course, 18, back-to-back. -back. Uh, playoff appearances, 2010, no surprise here. Seven, pretty huge there. Their most recent losing season was 2011-2012 season. And coming out. Number one, no shocker, New England Patriots, uh, 125 and 34, a point seven eight six percentage winning percentage. That is just crazy. Wow. Off the charts. Championships since uh, 2010, you had three. So you had 2014, 2016, 2018, 
playoff appearances is 2010, a cool 10, and their most recent losing season was 2010, or 2000, excuse me. Damn, so we have 10 playoff appearances, three championships. Mm -hmm. In this decade, do we have three scandals? We At least. Three cheatings? Yeah. Spygate, Deflategate, and Spygate then again. Spygate again. Right. With the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. That was always in this decade? Yeah, man. Uh, and and uh, if you don't, oh, I guess I was going to say Josh McDaniels wasn't in this decade. No, you know what? Spygate, well, the first Spygate wasn't in this decade. I was that think. like 2008? It seven? was It was like six or seven because then McDaniels got busted in eight or nine. With or the Broncos. With the Broncos. Yep. So, and it was before that. So I guess maybe only two scandals in this. No, three scandals. You got the Bob Kraft at the rub and tug spot. Oh, yes. So you got Bob Kraft <laughs> over in Jupiter, Florida. You got Asian massage. You got Spygate 2.0 and you got the deflate gate. That's not so good. three scandals. Yeah, three chips, three scandals. No, that makes sense. That's, That's easy math. That's good. <laughs> That's good shit. Um, 2002. There's a lot of chat uh, going on in the chat trying to figure out who the Browns QB was in 02. It was you were right. It was Tim Couch slash Kelly Holcomb. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, couch couch went out injured. Your boy Kelly Kelly Holcomb came in. Never heard of her. A lot of a uh, lot of reaction to that. A lot of reaction to the winning. Some jealousy over the Boston sports fans mm -hmm. in hey, the do chat. You, do you think the Browns now that they've got Dorsey out and also the head coach is this is this a step in the right direction finally for the organization? Let's just get into that really quickly. Yeah, Urban Meyer has been rumored to take over. Yeah, what is going on over there? I. I thought he's still coaching Ohio State by the looks of it last week. He yeah. was out there on the field. Dude, yeah. <laughs> right? Come on, Mox. Come on, Mox. He was out there on the field clapping his hands and coaching him up. On I his, he, like bent down right, on his right, knees. Right. Like, come on, let's go. The only thing he was missing was the football cleats. <laughs> My goodness. I agree. So now we're talking about Urban Meyer being the top name for the Cleveland Browns coaching job. Wow. Do you think he gets, if they, if they hire Urban, do you think he gets to choose the GM? Do you think they give him say? There's always you remember that old Bill Parcells adage from way back in the day. If you've ever seen NFL films or any of those shows, Bill Parcells always said, "Hey, when he was coaching the Giants, hey, if I'm going to be cooking the groceries, uh -huh. I should be able to go buy them." Wow. And and that's that's kind of been a that's lot of yeah, dude. And the Giants didn't have anything to say. They didn't say no. And uh, what happened? Took him to the Super Bowl. Jeff Hostetler. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I w I'm wondering if it's going to be one of those situations. Do they are they just like Yes, they bow down to Urban Meyer. Do whatever you want. Bring in any GM. Do whatever. Or do they still kind of uh, does the, the does the ownership group still kind of bring in their own GM and yeah. just make him the coach and keep things the way they want to do it? Yeah, I think they'll listen to him. I think he carries a little bit of clout and for good reason. Um, you know, I think he's done a lot of good things. I think he's had some scandals himself. We've addressed it in past casts. But yeah, he would still be at Ohio State if he if he wasn't doing corrupt shit in recruiting. Mm -hmm. If he wasn't covering up for his assistant was doing some mornings, morning show type shit over there mm -hmm. at Ohio State. He would still be coaching at Ohio State. He said this is his dream job. Yeah. He said it's the place he always wanted to be. So if nothing, if they didn't fire you and they didn't push you out, why wouldn't you be there? That just doesn't add up to me and it doesn't make sense. Ever since the Jim Gray interview, you don't want to coach anymore because some dirt got dug up, some things came, came to light, and instead of just facing it, he doesn't want to disgrace the university. He doesn't want to bring the university down, so he decided not to not to coach there anymore. But he blames it on his health. Right. Same same thing happened when he left Florida. Mm -hmm. Blamed it on his health. Oh, I need to I need to worry about my health. Yeah. I need to spend time with my family. You, well, he said the same thing when he left Ohio State. So what now? He's coming back to and going to coach the Browns. Yeah. Now he's coming to the NFL, which is way more aggressive way in more terms stressful. of like. Uh, <laughs> in case. Uh, I guess you know what you know what that's not very that's not true. I feel like the stress week to week is more, mm -hmm. but I feel like. It's more work in college football because you're recruiting yeah. all year totally. round. You're yeah. on the road, dude. You're yeah. hitting those that recruiting trails heavy. You're never ever home yet. So that, that's tough. That's tough. But uh, yeah, I think that's very interesting. I think it's ridiculous if he takes the Browns' job just based off of the reasons he's quit coaching jobs already. If you're quitting coaching jobs because you want to spend more time with your family and you want to worry about your health, then do that. Mm -hmm. Don't quit coaching jobs. Then take more coaching jobs. Yeah. You know who's not worried about his health? Pete Carroll. Not at all. 70. 78? 78. No, he's not 78. Oh, he's not 78? <laughs> Damn it. He's 70. Uh, he's saying his, I think he's like 71. Oh, okay. He's like early 78. <laughs> that, that would be something. If Pete I, looked like he's 78, if he's bouncing yeah. around like that. You know what? He might be. He might be. In the Monarchs, Pete might be bouncing around like that at 78. I just want to know what gummy's chewing. 
I got to get some of that. Is Pete coaching the Seahawks at the end of this decade? 2020 decade. It's 2029. Oh. Is Pete coaching the Hawks? No. Is Pete approaching 80? Is Pete already in his early 80s? Is he doing Joe Pa style? I thought he already was 78. Coach, yeah, yeah, you thought he was close to being in his 90s <laughs> at the end of the decade. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Good times. Um, let me see here. Let's, uh, yeah, let's just, that's, that's good on that. Let's, uh, let's jump into a little bit of this here. On this day, I see on this day everybody, we look at January 1st, so yesterday, of 2000. Have you ever heard the terminology? Why? Two. K. Of course. <laughs> of course. That's my best wrestling. How did I do? Not, not, a, not good? Not that good. It not good. Right. All right. Damn it. it. Was, there was a wrestler named uh, Dio Chris Jericho. I know of him, yes. He used the moniker Y2J. Oh, nice. In that era, late 99, early 2000s, he called himself Y2J, and he would come out That's with his sick. light up jacket. Yeah, dude, it was so That's kind of sick, actually. Chris Jericho is slowly becoming, not slowly, but with all the stuff he's doing now with AEW, dude, he's becoming... A, a wrestling legend, bro. Yeah. Like the Lionheart, as I found him in WCW of like 94, 95, the Lionheart Chris Jericho, some punk kid. He's just the illest with his gimmicks, dude. So, anyway, not to get sidetracked. Well, Y2J. Well, I was going to get sidetracked because Chris oh. Jericho actually has a band. Fozzy. Fozzy, you yeah, got it. It's kind of a song. heavy metal band. No, they don't sing this song. No, it's salt. No, come on. <laughs> but um, yeah, Y2J to Y2K. Okay, Y2K, man. So this is interesting, and I think it's worth talking about because of all the prep and hysteria that led to, obviously, emergency bunkers and costing the U.S. over $100 billion, dude. Do you remember all this? Like, because it all. I didn't know it cost them that much, but of course I remember. That's yeah. a lot, hundred billion, dude. It all started with like software coding, right? Y two K was always set up for two digit numbers, and this right. whole Y two K, this whole transition of going back from, you know, ninety eights, ninety sevens, ninety sixes to zero zero. Well, you couldn't do that because that didn't encapsulate what was going on. You had to go from two digits to four. Yeah. And code was always written for two. And that's where all this software, like you had to get this new software. And that's where a lot of this money came from. It was a space-saving strategy. Yeah. So in the early days of computing, they used that as a space-saving strategy because it took so, more, so much more space to store data right. that programmers would save dates with two-digit two years instead of four. So instead of 1965, they would just make it 65. Mm -hmm. The problem here, in the 70s, as the 70s, 80s, and 90s came around, people started to freak out as computers, and they thought the year 2000 would really just send them back, and it would just be marked as 00. So right. it would send them back to 1900, yeah, and good. everything would fall apart. Spoiler alert, obviously it didn't. It didn't fall apart. <laughs> everything was fine. <laughs> the, the millennium bug was no bug right. at all. But... Even with all the people resulting in and kind of freaking themselves out, spending too much money on protection, there were times when it actually did end up being a little bit useful. Researchers at MIT argued that after the 9-11 attacks, redundancies developed in anticipation for the Y2K glitch that never came helped the city's transportation and telecommunications sectors to provide an impressive level of service in the wake of the enormous devastation. Hmm. That's pretty crazy, right? Yeah. So if they weren't preparing two years earlier, 9-11, might it might have been a lot harder for them in New York City. So as, yeah, no as a lot of people make the point of, oh, Y2K did nothing, people didn't spend any money. You know, they're, eh. if, you, if you do a little bit of research, you could probably argue on the other side that it did put a certain infrastructure in place that did help along the line mm -hmm. for the next attack, which happened to be 9-11. Yeah, I think it's interesting because it created a lot, almost like a progressive mo uh, movement, right? Yeah. You know, like yeah. we're progressing because we have to, we're forced to, and let's get it done whether it happens or not. But nobody was thinking whether it happens or not. I look at, dude, I, I take a take a ride back here. Hit me, the, hit me with the back. Let's go back to a little small town uh, in Kansas called Ulysses, <laughs> okay. where I lived, right? This, dip, uh, Gibson's Discount Center. Gibson's <laughs> Discount Center was still around, as a matter of fact. <laughs> We were buying all the supplies from Gibson's Discount Center. Okay. Um, this was a time where uh, all my friends and family uh, started developing bunkers 
and shut up yeah dude shut up well back in kansas they were digging out bunkers we already had them though oh. a lot of us had them because of tornadoes okay i lived tornado in what shelter. they call tornado alley right yeah so we kind of transformed uh, these or transfixed these bunkers into from tornado bunkers to almost like um life-saving supplies right so i remember the vast amount of water supplies flashlights batteries oh my god do we had so many batteries that if we had any dildos in the house i mean <laughs> women women would be pleasured oh forever because of all these batteries that we had in the house it was incredible oh my god um i remember like gibson's discount center and walmart god which we had to, you, <laughs> which we had to drive like an hour and a half almost two hours to get to a walmart that's how far we were. But I remember like seeing shelves of batteries being sold out, candles being sold out. Oh yeah. Flashlights, um, water. And this is at the time where it was kind of transitioning. So we, we lived on a farm, so we had our own well water, which was cool. So we had our own water rights and all this. Damn. But if you didn't, everybody was going to get this clean distilled water because who who knew what was going to we we were worried about our water systems getting like the meters infected. might shut down like, all of a sudden poop they're going to let poop flow in the clean water i'm getting shit in my oh, water no. this is not good we ain't letting this happen out yeah. here in tornado alley yeah. get your boots on <laughs> and let's go take care of business okay <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that being said, that's what this really takes me to a time of like really kind of um, getting all these life supplies together. And, and you know, if, if markets were shut down and grocery stores were shut down, trucks were not delivering goods from obviously, you know, where it was produced to the shelves. Um, that was what kind of I lived through. And that well, that's what I really remember with Y2K. Um, we didn't have a computer at that time. So we didn't have the dial up speeds, the AOL. We weren't uh, where it took you, you know, 30 minutes to download one song i really didn't have it so right. uh, there was nothing that we worried about from the code stuff but we worried about kind of the governmental stuff where did you have your money so you know my family pulled out a lot of our money which we didn't have a lot of we were farmers you know and we were shoving it in like our mattresses i know it's so no cliche shit. but yeah we were doing that which you guys is really were like crazy. literally like like an old country song you're yeah. burying some money in a coffee can or you're throwing it in a coffee yeah. can burying it out in the backyard yeah. just like national lampoon's vegas vacation come dig it up yeah hey clark get your coffee cans <laughs> oh look here's a hundred in here that's a right. good one. Oh, i remember i that was when i sold my kidney <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. That's crazy. It's incredible. Dude. Yeah. So that was my uh, that was my real big uh, remembrance on on Y two K. I didn't have anything like that. I just remember you know the computer hysteria and I don't know. I was a dumb little kid, so I didn't really give a crap, and I didn't think it was that serious. I never got that freaked out about it, even as a as a kid. But what about you, Jalal? Did you do you have any kind of? No, I didn't have the the bunker stuff, but we You're just, I just us, remember so. having like the garage full of like canned goods and a Damn, bunch of Damn, so your parents did stuff. that shit too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We didn't do anything. We didn't prepare at all. Like we, <laughs> I don't even know what we would have done. I don't even remember us having an extra jug of water. Like they weren't, they weren't freaking out too crazy, but they were a just garage like, full of supplies. Have food and yeah, yeah. That's what do you mean freaking out too crazy? Uh, we didn't get like flashlights and candles and huh. stuff, but. They're just like, let's you. just make sure we got food to eat. Trent, Trent Gillespie says, dildo bunkers. <laughs> <laughs> My man Trent, $3, bro. Trent, <laughs> All right. on the stream. Thank you, dog. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to buy some batteries. Let me uh, let me sink this shot real quick. Get please. this in there, man. Why, why are you buying batteries, dog? <laughs> <That's>, that was... <laughs> Missed it. Oh, Take dude. that L on the way. Is that a hairball? What's new? What's new? Choklahoma coming, coming over here. Dildo Watched yeah. Y2K New Year's Eve on MTV while chatting on AOL. It was lit for sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how mine nice was. Nice one. It was. Jalal was two years old. Were you two? <laughs> no. Were you in diapers? I was on AOL. I was on AOL chat. Oh, you were you were on Messenger? Oh, uh, yeah. Chatting it up? Yeah, that was crazy. AOL. And what's Ron Mexico. What's going on, Ron? People were going crazy. They were. Ashby Tapes. What's good, team? First time live, long time listener. Appreciate you coming through yeah, the nice. Welcome, man. Thank you. Damn, a lot of reaction to the, uh, the team talk in the chat. Mm -hmm. A lot of people calling the Pats cheaters. Uh, T-Mobile backing the Pats till his death in there. <laughs> no surprise. Uh, loves the Pats. So that is, uh, yeah, that's what's going on in the chat, man. Uh, people are buying bullets for gun bullets and guns like crazy. I can believe that. I do. Yeah, yeah hell sure. yeah. Hell yeah. I could definitely uh, see that going down. All right, let's jump into, um, let's go into, uh, bef before we get into the heater segment, we're going to do heaters this week, and it's brought to you by Play Balto. We have signed up on Balto.com. So if you guys didn't join our bowl tournament and you would like to join the NFL Pick'em, it is now live. Actually, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to paste the um, link in the chat for you guys here. That way you guys have it. If you want to join right now, you can. But 
what this is, is all you have to do, it's just an NFL pick em. It's the playoff pick em starting this weekend. Obviously, there's two games Saturday. There's two games Sunday. Just pick the four games this weekend. Then next, uh, at the end of the weekend or sometime next week, when you know the matchups for next weekend in the divisional round, pick those four games, then pick the AFC and NFC Championship, then pick the Super Bowl. The, most per- or the person with the most correct picks wins it all. It's a $10 pot, winner take all. Um, it is very, very simple. I like it. So I just put the uh, I just put the link in the chat. Are you sure we should do heaters then? Because I feel like we're giving them the one up. Oh, dude, it's not against the spread, <laughs> and um, yeah, it's, it, our the pick them is just straight ups. Okay, pick em. so it's gotcha. not against the spread. Plus, I mean, who's to say? I don't need. I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, dude, with the this, playoff games. I'm thinking it's dogs. It's dogs this weekend. Yeah, dogs heavy. So that is the link for Balto. Love you it. guys want to sign up, get in there, get in the pick'em. We got to hit at least twenty people for it to for it to work. So mm-hmm. hopefully we can hit twenty people by Saturday. I'm gonna be tweeting it out and putting it on my socials. I'm gonna have it in the description here on YouTube. If you listen on the audio format, go over to my uh, Twitter. Go over, follow MUP Cast on Twitter. It's on there. Uh, hit the description on YouTube. It's in there. There's Dal ways. Palantonio. Yeah, Dal Palantonio. It's everywhere, man. So there's ways to find that um, if you guys want to find it. Before we jump into heaters, I thought this was fun. What do you know about the best team to bet on in the 2010s? The mm-hmm. best team of the decade to bet on. Um, out of any sport. Out of any sport, any team. They covered the spread the most amount of times. They won the most. They made you the most money. What was the team? Wow. Um, it's not the Patriots. It's certainly not. I'm going to say... Give me a hint at least. That's a lot. There's a lot of sports. There's out a there. lot of sports. A lot. It's, it's one of the four majors: baseball, football, basketball, hockey. Okay. It's nothing crazy. It's not lacrosse. It's a, obviously dev, <laughs> it's a team you've heard of. It's a team that was on the top ten list of your best teams. How about that? Okay. Uh, let's say. I'm going to say baseball, and I'll say. Yeah. Is it Dodgers? Take that L on the way yeah. out. It's, hard, it's tough. There's a lot of yeah, teams. There's a lot of teams. Jalal, you want to take a guess? You want to take a stab? I don't remember your top 10 teams, but um, go Yankees. Take that L on the, the way Jankies. out. The Yankees. There's, t- there's a mantra in sports betting. Yeah. Good teams win. Great teams cover. And no team covered more in the 2010s than the New England Patriots. It was the Patriots. It was the Pats, dude. Damn Their it. inclination was right. The number one team on your list, the New England Patriots. The Patriots covered the spread a remarkable 60% of their games, going 108, 72, and 2 against the spread in the 2010s. Easily the best mark in the league, despite bookmakers inflating the lines in an effort to catch up with Bill Belichick's covering machine. Couldn't do it. Belichick and the Pats always stayed one step ahead. New England was favored by an average of 6.8 points during the decade, nearly double the Green Bay Packers, who had the second highest average uh, spread at 3.8 points, according to ESPN stats and information. Crazy, dude. So not only did they cover more than anybody else, their shit was double. Their spread was double, and they still covered more than anyone else. That's crazy. Hmm. It's crazy Vegas couldn't find that adjustment. Yeah, no doubt. It's nuts, dude. The Patriots cl- covered the in, uh, the inflated spreads by an NFL best three point five points per game, dude. So that you was know, you know how you know how tough that is, dude. Uh, us as betters, like uh, you know Vegas, man, they don't they don't miss. They're tough, and that's why it's hard to win consistently. Yeah. Like in NFL, I find the first four weeks of the season some of the better betting because no one knows what the hell's going on, right? And you can kind of take advantage of injury reports and little things, but. As things start to work themselves out, it gets harder and harder throughout the season. Vegas gets so good at those lines. They're yeah. so accurate. They're within a few points every game. Uh, very, very tough, man. Very tough. But that being said. That's interesting. Let's, uh, let's jump into uh, the heaters for this week. All right, Em. This is my heater. I dare you to hit it. Hot shit. Hot shit. We are going too hot. Too hot. Too hot, lady. Here come the hot stepper. Heaters. Haters. Wild card weekend. Only four games to choose, so we'll choose all four of them. But first, a huge shout out to my guy Ben Madry. Black Prez's brother has taken down the DraftKings tournament two weeks in a row. Hmm. He was in the chat last week talking shit and I didn't get to it, but he's crushed it. So congrats to Ben, man. Two weeks in a row taking down the DraftKings tournament. Uh, DraftKings will be easy this weekend. It'll be four team. Oh, damn. 
If you're going to do DraftKings this weekend, you've got to have your entry in on Saturday. Sorry, guys. So I'll have that live right after the show today. I'll have that thing yeah. live. but Because you got to have it in Saturday. There's only four games. Mm-hmm. Or should we not do DraftKings since we're doing the pick'em? Yeah, we'll do DraftKings. Double up, man. It. We'll do it. See who wants it. Double if, up. If we don't get in one in there, then we'll uh, we'll just whatever. We'll shoot him. Yeah. All right. Um, James Garagno would be pissed. I know he's been. He's guy, been that, guy's, down. that guy's been teeing he's been off. Taking down some turnies. Let's start with early games. Texans Bills. Who do you got there, Dow? This First is a, this is a real tough one for me, man, because I want to say Texans all damn day. I want to say Deshaun Watson's going to lead the battalion. He's been playing awful here of recently, and uh, I, you know, I think that uh, the Bills D is 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 legit, and that's what's kept him in it. Um, I don't know if I see Josh Allen doing too much, but I have to have to take Bills plus three. Oh, I got to go with the dog. He likes the dogs. Here's what I'm going to say. What are you going to say? I think it's important to note that this is Josh Allen's first playoff start. Mm -hmm. Here's a list of how well QBs have done in their first playoff appearance. Going back to 2002, I'm not going to go that far, but let me tell you this. Last year, crazy, in the playoffs last year, there was four players, four quarterbacks that made their very first playoff appearance. Oh, that's wild. Guess what? If you would have gone against them, like I'm going to do this week, taking the Texans minus three, you would have went three and one last year. Pat Mahomes, the only guy yeah. to cover the spread and win straight up. Otherwise, you had Mitch Trubisky, who Poop. lost. Mitch Trubisky minus six and a half, he lost. Awesome. Lamar Jackson minus three got killed. You remember, everyone thought I he do. couldn't throw in the yeah. playoffs. Lamar Jackson got beat. New then man. Deshaun Watson, his first playoff start last year, he lost Bad. minus two. So, so you would have went one and four? Or no, one you and three. Uh, Sorry, one and three. You would have went one and three with if you chose those quarterbacks, or three and one if you would have gone wow. against them, which I'm doing. I'm so going against five spot. Let's put five on it. I got five on it. I got five on it. Dope. All right, you and I, we've got five on it. I'm taking the Texans minus three, dude. And this goes back. This goes back, guy. That was just 2018. Then you got Case Keenum, Blake Bortles, Jared Goff, Dak Prescott, Nick Foles, all lost. You have to go back to 2012 before Pat Mahomes last year. You have to go back all the way back to 2012 to find a quarterback that won in his first playoff start. You know who that was in 2012? I'll give you a hint. He did it in Lambo and he blew their doors off. Ooh, we thought it in Lambo. We thought it was the next. We thought he was the next coming, dude. Yeah, well, you'd we have to in Lambo. We people were putting him in the Hall of Fame, bro. <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, damn, Lambo 2012. Uh. No, I can't think. Colin Kaepernick. Oh. Went in there with Jim Harbaugh. Remember yeah. that rushing attack? They just could not That's stop right. him. He was running all over him. He looked like Lamar Jackson at that point. Yeah, he did. Crazy, dude. Yep. So you have to go all the yeah. way back to 2012 to find a starting quarterback that won in his first playoff appearance before Patty Mahomes last year. I'm still taking Josh Allen at plus you, three. You if know you what? like those numbers, go ahead. I'm, Co- I'm going to take the odds. Colin Kaepernick was still in this decade. We still have hope, <laughs> baby. <laughs> all right, let's go. Uh, the next one. Next, game's, next game on Saturday is the night game. New England hosting Tennessee. What do you got in that one? Uh, I got Spreads five right now, right? Yep, yep. I got Tennessee all the oh, way. Tennessee yeah, this plus guy. five. Here's this the deal. Guy. Patriots are going to win, but this game is going to be too close, and I want to just kick my feet up. I want to relax. I want to enjoy this game. I want Robin to make me some nachos, and I want to get a, a, a butt massage at the same time from her. I'm going to take the Titans. Plus five. Is this more about the Titans? You like the Titans, or you don't like what the, how the Patriots looked last week against the Dolphins? What dude, are you I, doing here, I, dude? I haven't, I haven't liked how the Patriots have looked since they since they went eight. No, okay. after that, I haven't liked the Patriots at all. I wouldn't bet against them. I like the Patriots. They have the experience. Belichick is going to come and exterminate the best player like they always do. But that still leaves some opportunity with AJ Brown, with uh, um, Derrick Henry, with Tannehill. Who knows? I think there's some options. Patriots still win. Don't cover the spread. I think you... I will give the Titans credit, and I will specifically give Mike Vrabel credit. I think he belongs in the Coach of the Year conversation. He's not going to get it. Obviously, look what they're doing in Baltimore. Look what other people are doing. But he had the balls to pull Marcus Mariota out. They did. When he was shitting the bed, and he turned the entire team around. He turned the entire season around. They were nowhere near making the playoffs. At all. They were looking awful. And you bring in Ryan Tannehill... And they turn him into a winner. He's got the team believing. All that being said, I don't think they beat New England this weekend. I don't think they cover the spread. I think New England wins this game by a touchdown or more. Uh, It's crazy to me that people are, and I don't know if you are, but I think the public is hammering Buffalo because of the Miami loss. 
No, and I'm no, not. No, I don't no. think that the Patriots. No. I'm not saying that the Patriots are the Patriots of old. No, they're but not. I'm not jumping off the Patriot bandwagon until they show me it's that too they're early. done. It's only five points. It's less than a touchdown. I think they can hold it together. You, you we're talking about a team that just played that dominated Buffalo Bills a couple weeks ago, dominated them, and they only won it by a touchdown. But it was way more. They should have won that game by two or three touchdowns, easy. But they ended up winning by a touchdown. I think that's exactly what happens here. I think Tennessee plays them just like Buffalo did. I think they're beating them handily. Buffalo comes and squeaks up a couple scores. They maybe win by a tutty. They they don't win by as much as they should, but I think the Patriots. I'm taking the Patriots to cover five on it. Another five. five All right, let's go to the Sunday games. Minnesota against New Orleans. New Orleans, the home squad. Down in the dome. Spread is seven and a half right now. Mm-hmm. What are you looking at? Too much, man. Taking Vi- <laughs> oh, goodness. Too much. I'm taking Vikings plus seven oh, and a half, wow. dog. Wow. Yeah. Guy. Love it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is great. Delvin Cook's coming back. He was never on IR, but obviously um, they had set him down. You had Boone come in. Didn't do a great job by any means. Uh, but Delvin Cook is going to be that energy that, uh, that, the, that the Vikings need. Um, I think that's just going to create yet another um, versatile weapon for them uh, that they that they haven't had the last two maybe three weeks I think now uh, is what it is I think uh, you look at Stefan Diggs and what he did uh, the Minneapolis Miracle um, I think Stefan Diggs Ooh. is going to have his numbers right um, I think the you know what you got to look at is New Orleans D is and can be tough but there has been some breakdowns in their D and I just don't think it's it's big enough and I think that's a lot of points so I got to take the plus. I got to take Vikings. You just talked about a revenge game. For sure. For the New Orleans Saints. For sure. From two NFC championships ago. Three NFC championships ago. Three. Yep. When Case Keenum burned them around the corner with Stephon Diggs. Then they went and got their ass kicked in Philadelphia. Yep. I would have much rather seen that NFC championship be the Saints and the Eagles. Absolutely. Instead, the Eagles beat the shit out of the Vikings. It wasn't even close, and they went on and won the Super Bowl. But... I cannot believe you're going against the Saints mm-hmm. on a revenge game yeah. at home. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? In the dome at home. I don't yep. even have a ton of facts for you. I do know Dalvin Cook's coming back, but yes. I know that I also hate Kirk Cousins in big spots. I can't stand Kirk Cousins in a big spot. The Saints are at home. It's a revenge game. Let the Saints come marching in. Want to go five? Let's do it. Let's do it. I got five. No, not one of us is the same on any of this. And you're saying and you're saying the listeners are going to cheat off our heaters. We ain't even agreeing on the heaters. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, let's go to the last game of Sunday. The Eagles against Seattle. Eagles hosting mm-hmm. Seattle. Seattle's a different team outside the dome. What do you or outside the uh, the Link Century Link Stadium? What do you got? Seattle has a better record on the road than they do at home this year. There you go. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. So I'm taking Seahawks minus one and a half against the Eagles. The (laughs) Eagles secondary, trash. The Eagles have no run game, trash. Yes, Jordan Howard's back, trash. I don't know what to tell you, man. The Seahawks, you cannot bet against the Seahawks. Playoff contention, playoff time, win their division. Pete Carroll, Marshawn Lynch, they're going to do the right things. They're going to give him the ball when they should. They're not going to make mistakes by throwing the ball. You have a Tyler Lockett healthy. The Seahawks are going to come marching in. Not at home. First of all, this is the highest bet game of the weekend. I don't. I Most it. of the money coming in on Seattle. More money coming in on Seattle than any other team has driven the line up to one and a half. I'll take the Eagles plus the one and a half because you know I love betting against the public. Yeah. And it looks like um, you and I are going to have another. Are we, we got another one? We're going to finish it out? I might as well. I got five. 20 right, bucks. 20 on the games this wow. week. We're disagreed on every single game. I don't think it's been this way. <clears throat> All season. All season. There's no way we've disagreed on five heaters. Never. And there's not five four, here. There's four, heaters, four yeah. but there's there's no way we've disagreed Never. on every game. I think uh, I talked a little bit about I talked a little bit about the fir- the uh, first playoff games for quarterbacks. This is Carson Wentz first playoff appearance, right? Because you remember in the Super Bowl run he was injured uh-huh. before the playoffs. Nick Foles came in, took him took him uh, yep. to the promised land. So that worries me a little bit, but. I think he's going to be the guy, not Josh Allen. I think he's going to be the guy to get over that hump. He's going to win his first playoff start. Miles Sanders coming on strong late in the season. Lane Johnson practiced this week. Zach Ertz practiced this week. Looks like they're going to play. The injuries did concern me about Philly. But the last five weeks of the season, the Seahawks went 2-3 and and allowed the ninth most points in the NFL. Mm. Guess what? 
during the last five weeks of the season, the same last five weeks of the season, the Eagles went 4-1 and one and scored the ninth most points in the NFL. I think there's a lot to like here with the home underdog. Fly, Eagles, fly, baby. Uh, Let's go. Good luck, fool. Good go. luck. I'm on the Eagles if this you, week, if, if the Eagles had Big Dick Nick, it's a different story. <laughs> they don't. We're I'm fine. just saying. Get out of here. Carson's fine. Carson's, Carson's fine. fine. Carson's, Carson's going to get it done. Carson's not fine. Carson's going to get it done. That's your heaters this week brought to you by Play Balto. If you um, sign up on Balto through our link, you create your own account. You can create your own pools. If you want to create your own March Madness pool, mm-hmm. your own office pool, your own NFL pick em pool around with you and your homies or around your office or whatever you want to do, Balto is the easiest way to do it, man. Yeah. That's the way to go. Dude, drop it on the office people. Take their money. No doubt, no doubt. So playbalto.com and make sure you sign up for our NFL Pick'em. And when you do that, send your $10 to mostunderratedpodcast at gmail.com on mm-hmm. PayPal. It's the easiest way. Some of you guys send it to me directly. That's fine. I'll, I'll get it to the right spot. But um, if you don't know where to send it, mostunderratedpodcast at gmail on PayPal. So that'll go heaters uh, week or weekend. Wild, wild, wild card, card weekend. weekend. You're on. Oh, my God. We're completely opposite. Three dogs, one favorite. That is crazy. Yep. Uh, 46, 36, and two for Dow on the season, 48 and 36 for me. I'm two games ahead of you. This is my weekend. This is it. You got to, you got to take this thing down. You got to go four and oh, this is my weekend, but you have really bad picks this week. I don't know how you're going to go four and oh, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I remember my first wild card weekend pick. Let's, let's move. A lot of people in the chat, a lot of people in the chat think you're effing up Dow. Well, a lot of people in the chat think you're effing up going against the, uh, it's because we have a lot of East coast supporters. I understand that. There's no shade going against the Pats, going against the Eagles, <laughs> going against the um, uh, Patriots. Oh, dude! I just want. Wait, did I say Pats? Who are you going? You're going against the the Pats. Going against Saints. The, that's right, Marco. Yeah. Marco's on your ass. Oh, Saints. Marco. Pats, Saints, and Eagles. You're catching shade for that. Not good. But hey, these are the most underrated picks. No doubt. Boy, Dow Palantonio. Damn, dude. I need to. So Saturday I'll be good, but Sunday I'm gonna have to figure out a way to watch these games somehow between flying to LA mm-hmm. and then getting on the cruise. Don't worry, I'll just text you. I'll keep you in the loop of your losings. Actually, you know what, dude? YouTube TV, I think it just solved my problem. I never had YouTube TV before this year before traveling. Now I'm good. YouTube TV, I jump on there. You got all the games on the network. Mm-hmm. They're all on a regular network TV. When you're traveling in and out of areas, though, sometimes there's not availability of areas. You may have that, but it should work otherwise. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Like yeah. locked out. Yeah. Certain mm-hmm. shit. All right. Makes sense. You, you won't be able to watch La, Las Chivas. Oh, Las Chivas. No Telemundo. Let's, let's move into uh, sneakers and fashion brought to you by Hefe Lux. If you want to boost the comfort in your sneakers, man, check out HefeLux.com. Purchase some Hefe Lux insoles. Use the code underrated. Save yourself a little bit of money on there. If you're a Jordan wearer, if you like to wear other sneakers that aren't always the most comfortable, get yourself Hefe Lux insole. Replace the insole that they come with. And not only can you save that insole, but you can boost your comfort with Hefe Lux insoles and use the code underrated to save a little bit of money. Uh, make sure you guys are up on the sneaker reviews, man. I mentioned that at the beginning of the show, but if you guys have not, please uh, be please check out the sneaker reviews, man. I think if you're into sneakers, you'll enjoy the shit. The, uh, we're putting out quick, concise, quick-hitting quality reviews. Mm-hmm. doesn't take a ton of time, but it'll give you a lot of good information, maybe some funny jokes, mm-hmm. some funny video edits. And uh, yeah, so make sure you guys are checking those out on the channel, man. Bet on it. Breaking sneaker news. I'm seeing on the rundown. I don't even know what that is. What is that? Ah, let me tell you, man. So you have it. Uh, you have yeah. it. I need a breaking news sounder. I know, man. <laughs> you need to get. You need to get me out of here. So, Miami Heat forward Jimmy Butler and Jordan Brand have mutually agreed to part ways, bringing oh. Butler's multi-year foot year, uh, footwear and apparel endorsement deal with the company to an end. Ten, uh, ten months before its original end date. Shit. So not only is it coming mm. to an end. There had to have been something that happened. He must have broke the rules, man. He must have wore a Yeezy. What do you mean? No, I don't know. I'm just oh, wondering. Like, like, I'm just wondering how. I thought you were serious. No, I'm just wondering how this kind of came to an end. But not only that, but ten months before its original date of September 30th, the 2020, that was when his uh, that was when his contract was uh, his expiration date. Uh, but this is industry sources have confirmed. So this split makes four-time All Star and four-time All Defensive Wing the highest profile sneaker free agent across the league, right now, as of now. 
That's what do you, crazy. What do, you, what do you think, man, looking into that? You look at Jimmy Butler. He's had a couple PEs, uh, I believe, in there. But, I mean, dude, since I think he got this, uh, I think this was 2000. So, let's see. Um, draft pick of 2011 first round. Butler had initially signed a shoe deal with Adidas as a Chicago Bulls rookie. Three seasons later, he took a reported 75% pay cut uh, to instead sign with Jordan Brand. He would go on and be uh, be named NBA's most improved player and become the first uh, first time All Star by the end of 2014 2015 season. He's been in the face for a long time. What does he lose by ending that partnership early? The, are the details of that out? Because obviously mm-hmm. that's a breach of contract, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you don't think Jordan Jordan Brand's just not some some you know excuse some my schmuck. language some fuck brand that's just like okay whatever you're Jimmy yeah. Butler have fun like they got him locked up. There's no what? way they don't got him locked. up. Why did he up. leave the previous deal with Adidas? Uh, it doesn't say. There was no. There's no speak on. But it said he took a huge that's, pay cut. That's kind of weird that that's to like go a recurring to Jordan. thing, mm-hmm. right? Do you think it has anything to do with him not being able to have his own silo or anything like that? Him not being able to have creative control on what he wants to do as far as sneakers, or I, it's weird. It's it's hard telling. I I don't really know uh, quite yet here on that. But the uh, tweet the tweet that I saw says he becomes the um, highest profile current sneaker free agent that's the tweet i saw how mm-hmm. does he become that's what i'm saying how does he become a free agent there's got to be some kind of he has to pay he's gonna have to pay a ton of money i think to so get out of that deal yeah <laughs> and if he already took a pay cut to go to jordan brand in 2015 and now he's taking now he's losing more, losing more, money. more money i've run away from jordan brand i'd be like jesus get me out of get me as far away from jordan brand as i can every time i step around i'm losing money with you guys yeah i wonder yeah i wonder if the the uh the company he does go to pays some of that or takes care of some of that or free some of that that uh, revenue up for him. But, you know, there are ties, they say. Dwayne Wade recently signed Warriors guard D'Angelo Russell, right, to his Way of Wade sub-brand with Lee Ning. Um, the rumor uh, that's circulating right now is that, uh, that Jimmy, Mr. Jimmy Buckets, goes and signs with Lee Ning, which is a, a part of Wade's association. It says they mutually agreed to part ways, though, so... Maybe he's not being taxed. Yeah, it's hard telling. That's interesting. He's proven loyalty for quite some time, right? Mm. For many, many years. But, you know, loyalty doesn't mean shit in the business. It's all about money. So who knows? That's very interesting. I want to see more. Uh, I wish we had more info. I hate when they hit us with some mm-hmm. with some attention-grabbing headlines and you could try to dig in and get some info Nothing about yet. it. It's too early still. I don't think, I don't know that there will be. If it's a mutually agree, it's a mutually agreed upon decision, it doesn't sound like we're going to know numbers, figures, or anything else. It sounds like it's mutually agreed and everyone's walking away happy with whatever was agreed to, and that's it. I doubt it's coming out in the public. I don't, there for what reason? Right. You know? Doesn't need to. Every, all sides are happy. If one side felt unhappy, that's why it'd come out, but that's interesting. Interesting stuff. Did you see all the uh, the Jimmy Buckets merch, the Jordan, the merch that he had and stuff before? Yeah, like, uh-huh. Wonder if all that shit just goes on clearance. Clarence. That's crazy. Uh, all right, let's move into um let's let's hit this really, really quick. I saw that uh the whole Troll Mageddon 2J's kicks situation has taken a little bit of a turn. And now 2J's is suing Troll Mageddon mm-hmm. for what? It looks like, and Jalal, you might uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it looks like uh defamation <clears throat> of character. Yeah. No oh, shit. Is what Troll Mag- or is what uh, Two Jays is saying, and I and I get that because Troll Mageddon, the whole story really is he went into you know Urban Necessities and then either sold them fakes, tried to sell them fakes, or made a video around saying, hey, look, one shoe or two shoes or multiple shoes were approved, you know, via the Urban Necessity staff and Cease, um, and just proving that Urban Necessities is allowing this. So um, 2J says, yeah, you know, we're not going to deal with this anymore, and let's put our foot down because your brand is everything. He's yep. said that many, many times in the past. Multiple people have with their own businesses. Um, but, you know, yeah, that's what I know so far. I just don't really understand why, what he's suing him for. I, I mean, the guy went in there and tested out Urban necessities, legit check process, right? Is that basically how I'm understanding it? Yeah. You're not allowed to do that? You're not allowed to go say, hey, if I'm going to go buy a shoe with this company, let me go see how good their legit checkers are. Let me make sure these fools are taking uh, everything into account when they're legit checking shoes. I think as a smart consumer, I think that's smart. I think it's more of a stunt on 2J's part 
being, you know, Trauma Geddon probably doesn't have a legal team or any money right. to go to, mm -hmm. to court. Right. So he's he just bought a brings Bentley. Legal action so in. he can pull up and say, hey, yeah. I'm going to what get. You, what's, your, what's your next move? What's and your if next he move? can't go to court, you know, stop making videos. Yeah, because there's no way. I mean, is. I don't want to say there's no way, but yeah, to control Mageddon really afford, you know, the type of <laughs> things that 2Js probably can. I mean, you know, that's probably arguable, but I think. But I think it is maybe a, a stunt, but I also think, you know, I don't blame 2Js because in that type of game, you know, um, you know, we've done real versus fakes in the past for a video for just knowledge based stuff. And I always worry about that because I don't ever want to be tied to any fake um, or 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 confuse the mass about what we're trying to do, whether, you know, we buy fakes, we, we get fakes to, to help the knowledge base and protect people yeah. that can be confusing and that can be convoluted at times. And I think what it comes down to is I think two J's is probably, there's probably a lot of protecting the brand in there as well. And also says, Hey, I've got American Eagle back in me, dog. You want to talk about real money? Right. Trollmageddon come at me. Right. So, I mean, there's probably a little bit of that too, a little bit of bully action. Let's be honest. But, uh, that's the most I know. And I, I don't want to talk more about it because that's, I mean, there has been legal action taken. And where it goes from here is kind of what we see. If I was Trollmageddon, I wouldn't back down at all. I'd be like, I don't understand the problem here. I'm, I, I'm going to buy an $800 pair of sneakers from your shoe before I, from your store, or uh, $800 pair of shoes from your store. Before I spend that $800, I want to make sure I'm getting a legit pair, pair of shoes. So I'm going to come in here, bring in four pairs of shoes, and I'm going to test your company's ability to legit check the shoes. And if I don't feel like that ability is good, I'm going to let people know this is what happened with my experience there. And this is why I'm not going to buy the $800 pair of shoes that I was going to buy there. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with Seems that. And fair. I think that stands right. up in a court of law. If, if that's all it is. Right. I mean, we don't know. We haven't watched all the videos and know all the talk behind the closed doors as to what that looks like. But if it's as basic as that, yeah, I mean, I think that's fair. I think that's your right as an individual. Especially if you're spending that much and you're a company. Yeah. That's supposed to be protecting me. You're a company that's selling me an $800 pair of shoes resale mm -hmm. that you're telling me is legit. So I don't think there's anything wrong with me being able to say, can your guys legit check these? Can they get these pass? That's why I think it's more of just a strong arm. I think right. he, he doesn't really think he has a case, but I think um, he doesn't expect there to be much reaction after that. Interesting. Interesting stuff. We'll see how, uh, We'll see where it goes. That's kind of what we know currently. Right. Um, Maybe we could ask Trump again. Right. Yeah, maybe we should get him on the show when I get back. Hey, maybe some shit will be wrapped up and we can get we can yeah. get either one of those fools. We'll reach out to both. I'll reach out to both sides. I'm, yeah. I'm not biased. I'm trying to get reporting. Right. So Yeah, he was in our comments what a while back. Troll him again. Yeah, he wasn't here actually. Um, in the post office? Yeah, his post office. You see any USPS out there? I was supposed to get these Lance yeah. Mountain dunks three days ago on Monday. Mm -hmm. We did the show Monday. I get a notification about seven something in the night that says the delivery location couldn't be accessed on Monday. So I'm like, all right, cool. Tuesday, get the same notification. New Year's Eve. All right, whatever. They don't come Wednesday because it's New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. Today, it says they'll, we'll try again on the next business day. Today's the next business day. I'm hoping that on Tuesday, the notification I got was at 8.16 p.m. Well, of course the shit ain't accessible at 8.16 p.m. It's an <laughs> office building. What are we doing here? <laughs> so that was, yeah. a, that was a bot reply. Yeah, you're a bot. You're I'll a bot, bro. Grab it if we, if we see him. Yeah, if we see. So I'm waiting on the dunks. What else do we have coming in? You have, uh, oh, the. I got the Supreme. Uh, snow tube. Snow tube. Nice. Coming dude. into today, actually. Um, so maybe we can shoot some content. Or Is it getting sent here or the crib? The crib. Oh, yeah. Well, so I was going to say maybe tomorrow. Then. Maybe tomorrow I can bring it into the studio. We'll shoot something. I, I mean, there's no, really no snow out there, but, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Um, all we'll right, get, yeah, so we're, we're we'll waiting get, on We'll this. get some flicks, but I got some dunks to show you. Would you like to see them? Yeah, actually, let's do sneaker release calendar first. All right, fair enough. And then we'll go dunks just to close sneakers. I'm just excited about my dunks. I know, I'm excited to see them. All right, they check this out, quick. man. So, yes, yeah, no doubt. Uh, so this is a week, and maybe even two weeks. This first part of January is kind of awful with sneaker releases. So this is a time, like Jalal says, to sell my shoes Get my money right and be prepared because come the second week of this month, it's going to get heavy. It's going to get real. And there's going to be some nice money. That what day? All right. So check this out. The only thing that's going on this week is the LeBron 7 China Moons. Uh, those dropped today on sneakers and Nike.com. Uh, were you a fan of those? Oh, I went after them heavy. <laughs> the hell you did. <laughs> 
<laughs> the hell you did. Of course not. Um, so yeah, the China Moons, they were kind of awful. They had the gold uh, toes on there. Uh, the Sevens, I'm not a big fan of. I didn't really get into LeBrons at all. But if I was, it was the Eight and Nines for me. Um, but again, they've always been too bulky. They've all been really performance related. Really so performance. I, I, I yeah, a lot of tech. Yeah. I don't need that. Same. You know what I mean? I, so I've always stayed away from those. But they did sell out, uh, sell out on Sneakers app t- today. And uh, yeah, I'm sure they did well. The thing that's coming up that a lot of people, again, that are ball that are ballers, the Nike Kobe 5 Pro Tro uh, Chaos are coming out tomorrow. And those are just the basic proto. Uh, and they have the gold Nike check. They have kind of the mesh lining. Uh, they have like the Volt uh, outsole on them. They've got the red laces. Pretty basic shoe. Again, low top. Very, very probably good to, to ball in. But that's that's tomorrow. Outside of that, dude... There is absolutely nothing worth talking about the rest of this week. We get into next week, however. I was about to say. Yeah, we get into next week. Then we start getting into some things here. That's where you're going to see the Air Jordan 13, the reverse He Got Games. You ever seen those? I think they're pretty cool. White, yeah. A black upper? Yeah, yeah black, black upper, upper white. Yep. Nothing crazy there, just kind of the reverse. I'm uh, not the biggest 13 guy, but I like those. Uh, I like the dominantly black up top and, yeah. and then the white. Yeah, Super easy to wear, right? Very easy to wear. Very easy to keep clean. Uh, the next one, shoe. yeah, January 11th is when that one is. The next one on January 11th, uh, the Air Jordan 1 Retro OG Black Metallic Silver Gym Red. They're saying this is probably going to be a men's satin shoe. Oh, really? That's what they're saying. That'll so, sit? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it'll sit. We'll see. It'll be the sit and satin? It'll be the sit and satins. Um, we'll see what that does. Um, I think that'll do okay. Um, but it's a very, very basic looking shoe. Uh, very GR looking. I don't nothing, feel it at no, all. Nothing special about that. I don't feel it at all. And then to cap off kind of the January 11th releases, um, we have the Pharrell Williams uh, and Adidas 4D in the active purple, and then the Pharrell Williams uh, Adidas 4D in the tech olive. And those shoes, I got to tell you, they're not bad. They're not awful. They're not great. But at a $400 price point, because typically the 40s are 350. Yeah. You throw the Pharrell name on there, add another 50 at $400. For that reason, I'm out. I am out. I so wouldn't out. even buy that shoe for 250. No. The Especially four- the 40 is not not the comfort we is it's just not that comfortable. Dude, they're not. Uh that shoe looks like it'd be a nightmare to try a style. It looks like it'd be about as easy as styling an uncaged Ultra Boost. Oh yeah. Which is hard. <laughs> I mean, realistically, shorts in the summer is the only thing you got. Or mids. Sometimes ultra boost mids. Yeah, I mean, because it is a mid silhouette. Yeah. It just like the, even the kits, even like like the, they're just t- tough to style. Yeah, they go good with joggers and shorts. That's about it. That's about it. And if you got if you're like if you're white and no offense, if you're white and you got super white legs, they all look like shit. <laughs> so I mean, don't even try. Like, yeah. Don't even try. Don't bring your pasty asses over here, dude. They're okay. bad. they're t- they're hard. They're hard to make look good, bro. I, you know, and I like olive. I, I I'd like to see more olive, but these are just. I mean, they don't they don't look great. Yeah, at all, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and that midsole, like I said, I've got four pairs of four D. You know, dude, if somebody offered me the right price, I I get rid of all of them, all four of them today. You don't need to keep any of them. None, no, dude. None. I, and and how when when you're saying stuff like that, how can you expect people to pay four hundo? Four hundred. Crazy. When three fifty was high. Yeah. I just can't believe it. So that's kind of what we have upcoming. So really, again, until we get to the fifteenth and on, uh, let me give you a little preview here. Uh, I believe it's actually the 16th and on. We really don't have much going on. You have uh, the Air Jordan 4 Black Cats at the end of the month. Those I was going to say, I don't see anything until the end yeah, of the month. I don't really need those. Those are going to be kind of hyped, uh, I think, a little bit. I'm not a big Black Cat fan. If I could get the Black Cat 3s, Jalal and I were talking about that. Yeah, you know, I'd be into the Black Cat 3s. Um, you also have the Air Jordan 6, uh, the DMP. Remember, they did the DMP pack. Um, this is just the single shoe, uh, the 25th again. So if you have the Black Cats, you have the Air Jordan 6 DMP, um, both on the 26th. That's going to be very, very heavy. Um, so that's kind of how this month ends. But you go into February, it's over. It's it's over. You've got All-Star Weekend right, coming up. Right. Dude, you're talking Air Jordan 3 Chicago All-Stars. you got Air Jordan 1 Retro Women's, UNC to Chicago's. You've got the Air Jordan 1 OG Pines. You've got Foam Posits coming back, which nobody cares about. you got Air Jordan 3 <laughs> UNC's. Oh, dude! Uh, February and March uh, are gonna be are gonna be stupid sick. So, outside of that, that's what I got for releases. Do you think those black cats are gonna sit? I know the last time they dropped those was like oh yeah, six, way man. back in if, the day. And, if, and if I bread, feel like a lot of those people are out of the game. If, if <laughs> yeah. bread fours kind of sat a little bit, like 
Right. They sold out eventually, but they were they were pretty easy to get. Black cats, Black cats. are gonna be easy to get and may even sit. You think they'll might they'll sit? I I figure they'll be easy, but sitting, they'll be easy to get and they might even sit. That's for, crazy for at to least think a few about days, yeah. for a shoe that hasn't dropped for fifteen years. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's just gonna be yeah, it's just sitting. No big deal. Yeah. I know. I think it will too. I'm Those not black go- cat threes though. Yeah, black cat threes. I'd be in, but these fours. Uh, I'm I'm gonna pass on the black cat fours. I'm out. I'm not into them. Yeah, dude. February, March just gets crazy with oh, sneaker yeah. releases. I'm excited. So uh, we still haven't made a decision yet, but uh, you know, as long as I can get the prices right, what do you think? We go to Chicago or not? We gotta get some sneaker passes. Yeah, we gotta get that yeah. going. We gotta get that going. You I'll work on to, that uh, while you're doing the cruise. Yes, research me. Give me an itinerary, a pricing, some. Some, yeah, the event timeline. Should we do a pop-up out there in Chicago? That'd be sick. Should we uh, meet up with some of you fools out there? Should we have some Chicago merch mm. going on? Let me, uh, yeah, let us know, man. Sounds delightful. Sounds absolutely wonderful. All right, you want to you check in on the comments? I'll grab the dunks. Yes. Cool. Um, let's see here. Going down the list. A lot of comments on the fakes. Pretty sure I got an email. Blake G, this is good. Pretty sure I got an email from UN last week saying they're no longer taking worn shoes as of 1224. I didn't read past the reply line, but I'm certain that's what it said. I also stopped, uh, or they also stopped taking Supreme Bape, et cetera. Yeah, so they're, they're in the email, it says they're not taking worn shoes um, as of Christmas Eve. They're no longer doing any worn shoes at all. And like he said, they already stopped Supreme, Bape, everything like that. Now, do you think that's because they have to via the legality and the suing that is in that is in suing? Or do you think that's just to protect their brand and no more until we get some consistency? Do you think it's a little bit of both? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. I, and I think too. it's a little bit of damage control and a little yeah. bit of, all right, let's try to straighten the ship. We might've been getting too big. Cause I mean, think about it. Everyone yeah. sees this man going to sneaker con buying stacks and stacks and stacks of shoes. Is he sitting there legit checking every shoe himself? Does he have a squad legit? Like how, mm-hmm. you know, how legit is that? And I think that's what people are wondering when you're just buying shoe after shoe after shoe with at all these sneaker cons from around the world. I think people just have questions. Yeah. And especially when it comes to used shoes, Used shoes are harder to authenticate. We've talked about that. Once certain shit gets, starts to get beat up, the stuff that was there is no longer there, or the stuff that was there is worn, and it's like, well, I can't tell anymore. Yeah. The Even the insole, you know, is is a big uh, authenticator with some shoes, and you get you rub those down and rub those off, and things come off. Yeah, it's, it's a tough business, man. I, I'm glad I'm not in it, you know? We mess with shoes. We buy them from trusted sources, and, uh, man, I, I, feel, I feel bad for... Uh, anybody that does have to legit check, that's a that's a tough biz, for sure. Uh, fellas, the thrift in me wants to ask, do you guys care for any clearance sales or clearance sales with pickups? I ask because I'm playing the game and waiting out on releases. Steal of the week kind of segment. Oh, totally, dude. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't cop everything right when it drops. Right. Especially lately. I wait on a lot of stuff because I think it's going to go under retail. A shoe I'm waiting on right now? winterized fours dude mm-hmm. i'm just waiting yeah those dropped and i'm just waiting for people to get off of them i don't even care if i have to buy them this summer when it ain't even winter no yeah. one's thinking about the shits and i'll wear them next winter i'll I can have get them, them cheap. prepped and ready yeah but dude i'm all about that shit i'm that, all about that is a hundred percent shoe and i got to see that finally i went to the foot oh, locker really? they have a full size run of course <laughs> you know at all foot lockers i got to see that shoe it is cozy inside is it oh, oh you tried God. it on dude Nice. I, I need that shoe, but it's not worth paying even retail. You no. get that thing 20, 25 bucks under retail and then throw your coupon on top of that. Now you got a deal, dog. That's a nice shoe. Mm-hmm. But it is super warm. The breathability is not so great on that. It is definitely a winter shoe, but man, that is a hot shoe under retail for sure. Totally, totally agree. I'm going to, so yeah, I think um, if you can cop, if you can wait releases out, cop them under retail, especially on shit that's not super hyped. Mm hmm. Yeah, dude, you gotta. I'd agree with that. You gotta do that. Um, what do you guys think of the Paul Rodriguez SB Dunk dropping the 18th, inspired by Mexican boxers? Have you seen that? I haven't seen that yet. I uh, I saw the tongue of the shoe. Okay. And it says it's it's like a it's like a boxing robe, but I didn't see. Oh yeah, I did. Okay. It's like real boxing, or is it like? Oh yeah, like, real boxing, dude. Oh. It's inspired by like. Mexican boxing. It's not like the Mexican wrestlers that wear the masks and shit. <laughs> I forget what those are called. Did he say Mexican the, wrestling, Dow? Luchador. Did he say lucha yeah. libre? Luchador. Or did right? he say Mexican boxing? Uh, I don't know. I saw. <laughs> I saw not paying attention. You know. 
<laughs> he, uh, yeah, dude. So the the Paul Rodriguez dunk high. Do you have that, Jalal? Can you pull it up? Yep. You know how like a lot of the you know how the like, a lot of the fearless pack had shit on the front lace. Oh yeah, look at it. it's got a little championship title. Oh, on the front lace there. You got the green swoosh. The red piping, kind of like boxing shorts. Yeah. Kind of like the white shorts. Those would be pretty sick as like a tearaway. Right. And another color comes they, up underneath. That would have been really dope. Yeah. Red and green. That would have been really, really dope. You know what I like better than the shoe? The box underneath it. Yeah. Look at that colorful yeah. box. Super cool. You the take new, the shoe, I'll take SB. the box. Well, on the inside too, that swoosh doesn't go all the way around. It's not green all the way. It goes to the, excuse me, to the back half and mm -hmm. then splits to red. Splits to white. Oh. So it's all white. Is that box is it, just for this shoe or is this like a new USB box? I would say it's just for this shoe. I think it's probably just for the shoe. The new boxes are coming out though. They said, uh, I think the new box colors are going to purple. Okay. If you go on dunks, sneaker yeah. news, they got all the photos, but there's a, the outsole is really dope. The outsole is split in Mexican flag, is red, it? red on the upper, then a, a shade of white in the middle. And then the back part is green. If that white swoosh was red 3M. Oh, it's 3M. 3M white. Mm. That'd be sick. On the inside though. Might not be as, eh, might not hit as well. Maybe. Go down. Look at the, uh, there's a qu there's a close look on the title. Go down one more. A little more, sorry. Oh, uh, dude, right I, like, I like the tongue. Oh, I you like, didn't see the tongue The yet. tongue sorry. is cool, man. Go, go up, go back up, up to the tongue. A yeah, it's bit? like a front of the, uh, yeah, that's front of the, the boxing Yeah, it is. Or, yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. Mm -hmm. I like that. I think it's really well done. I don't like the piping, but the piping is what makes you really think about the boxing shorts. Right. I absolutely agree with right. that. But go down one more to the outsole. Or a couple more. There's the title, the outsole. Look at, pretty cool. Oh, dude, that's that's fresh. Pretty cool, for sure, dude. I think that adds a lot. Of, uh, God, it's a, a Mexican it. shoe. I love that, dude. It, you know, so it's 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 shouting out. You know, Mexican boxing. I love that, and it's also Christmas. Oh yeah, you know Canelo. Oh, Canelo has six pairs already. Oh, no, he's he's laced. He's got his Canelo, he's got his shoes, and his Modelo. No, laced. Canelo with the Modelo. Yeah, those okay. are dope, dude. Look the at insole, the insole. Look at the insole. Man, I really. The only thing I don't rock with, I'm just not a huge fan of white shoes. Me either. But other than that, like I wish they would have made the primary color something else and piped it out with. What if they would have made black, a black shoe with the same? Piping. I'd rock with it, but I, I guess it wouldn't do as much. You need the white, red, and green. The dude. white looks like trunks. The white, you need it. Yeah. You need that it. title is cool, man. I love everything about it except for I'm just not a fan of the of white sneaks that much. But yeah. they're cool, dude. They're, are, they're well cool. executed. They look great. And I bet you they look better in hand. This is yeah. a shoe that we get it in hand. It's yeah. probably really nice. I would absolutely never wear this shoe. This would be a collector in me for sure. Um, and I think it's, from what we see here, super well done. Conceptually, one of the, one of the, best, well, one of the best shoes I've seen done in the five, ten years, conceptually speaking. Yeah. Great, dude. Great shoe. For sure. And I love the Mexican heritage. My mom, she's going to be, she's going to be pumped. I'm going to give my mom a pair of these. <laughs> Thanks, Joey. That's uh. Thanks for mentioning those, dude. Yeah. That's, uh, those are dope. I forgot about those. I saw them on social media, but I didn't know they had a hard release date of the 18th either. That's sick. Dope. All right. Speaking of dunks, here we go. Let's open these up, man. Here we go. These are the Nike SB Dunk Low Reagans. Reagans. Oh, nice. Cool. Fail Beast, I saw he had the OG pair just wearing them to lift. Dude, no those, <laughs> those no OG pairs, depending on size, dude, those are a thousand plus. I know. And he's just lifting in them. He's over here doing deadlifts, doing squats. Wow. So obviously, cool. obviously does come with a second pair of laces. You got black, comes with the stock factory already laced and ready to go. I love the rope laces and dunks. That's my favorite thing. I'm glad they never went with the thin or anything like that. I just love rope laces and dunks. Um, the tie dye job. I think that's been a point of controversy with this. It's like, why'd you ruin an OG style? And I think, you know, obviously with the uh, Bodecker, Tie dye, you know, bringing mm -hmm. that all conceptually again with this. I think that all makes sense. Am I a big fan of the tie dye? Does it look as good as the OGs? No, I love the OGs better. You know, with the actual panels right. as distinct right. colors. Um, but tie dye's in, and it was important to Bodecker to give him the crazy tribute that he deserved. Um, I mean, I think it's a well done shoe. Uh, you know, the white outsole uh, gets people. They just hate having white outsoles. Uh, but I think without that, it wouldn't have the contrast that it does. Um, the quality is pretty decent. The leather is very, very tumbled. That doesn't mean it's one of the softest leathers, you know, especially as we've seen the off white dunks that just came in when that is just the most supple, like leather going to a, get another leather jacket at Wilson's leather store. <laughs> this is not that. No, this is good, and it's tumbled like a mug. So if you're into tumble, that's great. Um, 
But that's kind of my opinion on it. Let me. Uh, Jalal's a big a dunk head. Right. He, he got some dunks he's trying to sell that I was trying to take from him. Which ones were those? Uh, what, what the were Gucci the, resins. The, yeah, the oh, resins. that's right. Oh nine or some shit. Yeah. Oh uh, nine. Yep. Wow. What do you think of these, Jalal? This is his first time seeing them in hand. I want to see what the dunk guy thinks. They're pretty sick. You like them? Um. Yeah. This this die is a little bit different, right? Is that what you were saying? Correct. But I still like it though. Uh, I think it looks a lot. It looks a little bit different than the the older version, but I don't know if I like the black outsole. Is that how it was on the old one? Black with the white bottom. Yeah, the midsole. Yep, the midsole. Yeah, they're pretty sick. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't have any complaints about these. It's, yeah, the it's OG, a lot of black though, but it is a lot right. of black. Yep. And that's the same as the OG. It was the it was the same midsole on the OG. The only thing uh-huh. they really changed is like this was all black up front, but then these were different. All guy. the panels had yeah. the orange and the yellows, yeah. and yeah, it was so like red and yellow on the black the pair kill. and the orange yellow on the yep on the white pair. So they just kind of mashed the black and the white pair into this pair, basically, is what they did with this release. They took the old black pair, which this panel was red and yellow, and then they took the white pair, which this panel was well, this one was orange and yellow, and they just mixed. Mm. They basically just created that. Yeah, that tie dye look. I like it, man. I'm I'm happy that the. I like the tongue tab. It says Nike SB on the front when it says Ray Guns underneath. That's super dope. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. Remember when they took the the fat tongues away? Yeah. Oh, dude, I that know was that a, was that, that was a bad time. That was the that worst. Was a bad Dark time. times. Yeah. <laughs> did you cut out your uh, Did you cut out like an old tongue and stick it up under? That's no, what we used to do. Nah, I've seen people doing that. Yeah, but we used to do that. that. Yeah. I just stopped oh. buying them all together, and then they brought them back, and that was kind of like. When they were just going down, and they yep. brought back yeah. the fat tongue, they started retroing a bunch of stuff. I it called was, it the pillow tongue. I love my pillow tongue. It tongues. was too late. I know, dude. Yeah, we used to cut out old skate shoe tongues and put them up under that to make them fat again. Yeah. <laughs> after that, <laughs> dude. And fire. you know what? That's funny that you mentioned that, Jalal, because yeah, I left Dunks at that time as well, and that's where I found myself wearing the Osiruses and the DVS and the Lakai's. I even went to Americas, but Americas had really thin. They were really thin shoes, but they man, they skated well. Yeah, but that's they, when I left when they stopped. They just the, didn't. They the didn't look tongues. the same. They didn't feel the same. Like it just looked like a regular dunk at that point. Yeah, and it just kind of killed the allure. Right. Yeah, these are sick. So yeah, man, I'm happy to have them. That was a that was a sneakers W for me. Uh, I've been on fire with sneakers here lately, and uh, I'm pretty pumped about it. So if I can keep this momentum up, man, I'm I'm, I'm excited. I don't know that we have a full on tip yet, so I won't reveal it. But yeah. we might have a tip, man, for sneakers. Yeah, we might, we might be able to put you guys up on a little bit of game. I so we're gonna do a let's test it throughout January. Yeah. I switched uh, a couple it. different things, and uh, so I'm doing some things with algorithms, with uh, processing, with shipping, and uh, hopefully, we, hopefully, we can give you put you guys on a little bit here. We'll see. We'll see. We're getting we're getting lucky. We're getting lucky. Um, let me see here. Specs BV, anyone like the Nike SB Zoom Blazer mid-edge? Got some off-white and Sakai vibes going on and flying under the radar. Have you seen that shoe? I have, yeah. It's like the pink, uh, it's pink and blue. And don't they have a deconstructed uh, yeah, swoosh, swoosh yep. where it's like off of it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. kind of looks like uh, the colorway, you know what it reminds me of? For some reason, it screams Pharrell to me. It f- screams Pharrell ice creams. Remember that brand Pharrell had? Oh, yeah. The ice cream brand? It looks like... A pair. I don't know if you can find it, Jalal. Um, what, what are it, they called? Nike SB Blazer Mid Edge is uh, is what it's called. But they're pink suede hit around the toe box, and then it's like a canvas material along the sides with a deconstructed swoosh, and only the stitching is left, and the stitching is pink along the inside, mm-hmm. and then the tongue is yellow with the same kind of baby blue. Uh, that's on the canvas, on the tongue. There you go. Yeah. It gives me an ice cream vibe for some reason. It is very ice creamy. I love how the swoosh is deconstructed on the outside, and then you have the full swoosh on the inside. Yeah. I think that's pretty dope. You know what, man? You know what, Specs? I would I would rock with these. Would you? If I could get these under retail, flying under the radar, like, I think they're cool. I could pull them off. I love love the toe, dude. I love how that suede just comes up, and it's a check. Look, it's a Nike check on the toe. That is fire. Is that? Look at from that side and then look at the other side. You oh, can see how it kind of checks out. I do see that. That is sick, bro. Huh. See if I can get a better I look. I rock yeah. with yeah. those. Dude. That's pretty cool, actually. Specs, those are those are those are dope. Look at the dual tongue tabs. 
You got the the blue one, and then you got the oh, uh, and then the white one below. Those, it. Damn! Dude, if those had any kind of branding, like any off white, any whatever, those would be it's so over. Hyped, hyped, so hyped. Those are sick. When do those drop? And it does have the deconstructed tongue as well. What's the what's the release date on this? Um, looking sneakers. Those are cool, man. I really, really like. I really like that. The Nike. Well, this pair is called the the Hack Pack, and the release date here says December thirty first, twenty nineteen. But it was a a European drop. Mm. Yeah, sneakers China, December thirty first. So I don't know at a hundred dollars USD. Um, so I don't know if what when the US is yet. Uh, according to this one, it's not to say that it's not out there, but those ones are dope. He said, pull up the white pair. I don't think the white pair are nearly as as dope. I don't think. It's the ones I remember seeing. Man, if those had any kind of collab with them. It'd be over. Yeah, those are. I didn't like them, and I don't really like well, the yeah, colorway that yeah. much, but uh, but the detail is pretty cool. But uh, I think that's more of a you should. Oh, there we go. Yeah, the white pair. The white pair is on Nike right now. Yeah, the white pair is dope. Yeah, The blue the, pair is sold out on Nike. The white pair is sitting. Yeah, I think the white pair dropped yesterday or today. They're not the white pair is almost sold out. There's 45s, 46s, 47s available. Mm-hmm. That's it. But you know what though? They almost look like a Cortez in the in the front from the front look. They look like a, almost like a weird Cortez in that way. Oh yeah. But then when you look at them on the side, they actually look really dope, dude. And the swoosh is navy. So you get that white with the red tongue hit in the navy. That is pretty nice. You know what? I actually like this one better. You might have to pull the white pair up, Jalal. Yeah, I'd ro- I'd rock the white pair. Just type in the same shit when we'll put white. Those those are pretty dope. The other ones are a little bit much Too for much me. for you. I think either way, the silhouette's dope. Yeah, dude, those those are cool. I think those are sick, dude. I love the I love the blue and the cream panels. I think that, that works really, really well. And then having that orange tongue up top. Is that a dual tongue? It, that that picture it is. looks like a that dual tongue. That one looks like two. Totally does. Huh. I like that. That one, one just looked like uh, two tabs on we gotta, it. Though. We gotta probably get some of these in hand, bro. This is this is the better one. Monday midsole. Are these are your outlets? Down in Orlando, bro. Are these they come to the outlets yet, John yeah. King? Let me know, bro. Upa Upas with that uh, outlet special. They're yeah. not going too crazy on resale right now, so. Mm. Yeah, we'll have to get a couple pairs of those. I like them. Doug R. Nobody liked the Defiant ones with the deconstructed swoosh. To me, I thought they were fire, and the leather was the best one for 2019. I uh, I did like the deconstructed um, swoosh on there. I was a fan of that. I really liked it. Cool. I had a little extra time to kind of chat with you guys at the end, wrap up, look at some extra sneakers, kind of uh, as we wrapped up sneaker talk there. Let me just finish with the uh, YouTube comments here. Yeah. YouTube comments uh, are brought to you by Most Underrated uh, Podcast and Pure Spectrum CBD. CBD is literally everywhere you look today. The gas station, social media feeds, stores, news stories, and even podcasts just like this one. In an industry that is completely unregulated, you need a CBD source that you can trust. Pure Spectrum has the most stringent testing procedures in the business. They were the first CBD company to partner with a professional sports organization, and they are more than 100 drug tested athletes on their roster if you're looking for a sustainable trusted cbd source look no further pure spectrum cbd use code mup to save 10 percent off all your orders pure spectrum cbd.com there you go dow palantonio yo all right man uh let's go to the youtube comments from last show my apologies again i skipped uh, some of those on the shows but now we're back in it we're back in it we Dirty are back. DJ. Starting it we off, yo, fellas, first off, I want to say congrats on how far the cast has come in the last year. You guys made a ton of progress over the past year, new studio and full time. Man, I'm out on the artist of the decade talk. I really don't listen to albums anymore, mm. just EDM songs and live sets. Well, Dirty DJ, we didn't, that's why we didn't do album of the year, guy. We did artist of the year. Okay, <laughs> we don't listen to albums either. We're, we're talking about streams. We're talking about hype. We're talking about the amount of projects they put out. Dirty DJ, maybe you should have listened to the segment, guy. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm going to roast you in your own comment. I'm just messing with you. Um, t- uh, times have changed. Most artists just come and go. I do agree that Post Malone's diversity could make a con- make him a contender for the future. Mm-hmm. Did you guys see his new face tat? Below, not good. Below, but to each their good. own. Uh, I did see. Do you have a picture of that? The, the Post Malone face tat? Yeah, I got it. Dude. I can't wait. I have, Initially, I thought this thing was a... I thought he got a cowboy boot with a big old spur. That would on make his, sense. Like chin. That's what I thought. 
He's a, he's a Dallas guy. Mm-hmm. He's so a was Texas like, guy. Yeah, he's always wearing the cowboy boots with his suits mm-hmm. and all that shit. No, it is not a cowboy boot with a spur. <laughs> it is a medieval hand mm-hmm. coming down the side of his chops like a like right, a sideburn. Like his jawline. Like a yeah, sideburn. Yeah, like a sideburn. Perfect. And then it goes down and then there's a, ch- a ball and chain attached to the medieval hand. He's holding like a ball and chain spike and the spike comes down and the chain comes down right to his chin. <laughs> So it starts up by his ear on his sideburn, comes what? all the way down by his chin. I don't know about that one. Well, you're not feeling that one? No. But you oh, were feeling wow. the rest, Jalal? <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. He, all, his, all his tattoos are kind of, they're a little much. The only one I like is the always tired. But, <laughs> that right. is so crazy. Under the cool. eyes. Under the eyes. Oh. I wonder how that's going to age under the eyes. Like, how, as he grows. It's and, just the placement is bad. Like Of this tattoo or all of, of them? Of most of them. Yeah, that's crazy. I think the ball and chain, or the, the chain thing should have came around hit the back of his ear. Ah, on the backside. Maybe. Backside. Not on the chin. He took the ball on the chin. That's nice weird. <laughs> nice. <laughs> his beard's not weird. His uh, ball and chain is weird. All right, let me finish his comment. Um, sneaker of the year for me, Yeez Real Reflective. Dal, you've said that. He's real f- reflective. You're like, I might as well just cop those. They're cheaper than the glows are. And they reflect and glow. And glow. The other ones just glow. I think I kind of need said that. that. Yeah. Since I missed out on the glow V2s, these were a must. Yeah. Glad people slept on these and copped for slightly over retail with the eBay coupon. Yep. Glow on them is serious. Might be a contender for underrated shoe of the year. Man, the, I'm hyped for the playoffs. Hope Lamar can take the Ravens to the promised land. Thinking Ravens versus Niners rematch in the Super Bowl. That's mm, a good pick. That'd be cool. TTF, have fun on the trip. Happy New Year's to the whole crew. Oh, and I was going to make an appearance in Denver on Saturday, but the snowstorm would have made me miss my connecting flight. How much snow did you guys end up getting? 30 DJ coming through on Saturday, bro. Wasn't that bad week? It, it, was, it was more than was projected, but it was yeah. like six inches, maybe five, six inches. Yeah, I think you had between four and five, uh, four, four and, and six. six yeah, yeah, depending on where you lived. Yep. No doubt. But it was more than we all expected. That's for sure. Uh, Roberta up next. Yes. I remember when Shanahan was fired. I heard it on the radio and had to pull off, in, <laughs> pull off into a parking lot and cried. <laughs> Love Mike Shanahan. His son is carrying on his legacy. Mm-hmm. Kyle has definitely gained tons of knowledge from his, his pops. Keep up the great casts, fellas. Continue to enjoy all the content and looking forward to number 200. It's a ways out, but confident you'll make it. Well Thank said, you. Berta. Appreciate great. it. Love it. My man, Hyper Venom. Dow is the biggest Kanye meat rider I've ever seen. <laughs> Kanye for artist of the decade? All he did was name some shoes, LOL, and mediocre projects. There you go, Dow. Well, I think uh, heat. here's what I would say. I think I argued it pretty well with the amount of albums, the amount of content, uh, the amount of influencing he did. And not only that, he went from little pump to religion. I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, he is the face of Yeezy. Uh, they still continually sell out. Sell out. So I guess yes, I'm a meat writer. Go figure. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I guess I'm a meat writer. Uh, I uh, have a nice life. Hyper. I think most most of, most of your <laughs> most of your <laughs> argument was like an influence thing. So yeah. a lot of people didn't like the influence argument. They're just strictly going off of that artist. I thought Dow did argue it well. I thought yeah, he took it, probably he a, well. a third of the segment we were talking about for mm-hmm. Kanye. He went. Yeah. Solid on Kanye. I think people facts. are just measuring it different. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's like you asking someone who's your favorite rapper. You're gonna get every different answer because people sometimes some people like storytelling. Some right. people just like the bar heavy shit. Some people like the freestyle shit. Some people like someone that can do all type of genres. Best rapper is just what's best to you. It's never right, yeah. there is no best. You know what I mean? E K F iPod. So wait, hmm. on StockX, do they come with the special box or not? Nah? If they do, man, goat is taxing n words. <laughs> That's true. So we sent out a tweet yesterday, right? Because we, we were looking at doing a review for the Nice Kicks, uh, the new special box. Well, if you look at StockX, you don't know if you get the spo- special box. Right. You look at Goat, they have two different options. Special box, nothing about a special box as a second link. So we really don't know. So then I we, asked on Twitter yesterday. Yeah, I put it out in the verse. Yeah. I'm like, yo. So then somebody sent is- us a link from Nice Kicks stating that every one of these would come with the special Encore box. In the lunch tin. Yep, that's what it says. It's a mystery. You gotta have that special box. So here's what's confusing. I think what's confusing us and people. On StockX, they only have it listed once. And it was before just the shoes. Now it shows the shoes in the tin it, in the picture. Oh, does it? It's only there's only one listing, but it shows the shoes in the tin. Then you know you're getting the before tin. Before it didn't show the tin. Go has it up as one with special box 
one non-special box. Right. I think Goat has it messed up. You think? I think Goat has it messed up and StockX didn't have it posted correctly. So I think StockX has it fixed. They just have one posting now. It shows the tin and the shoes. Gotcha. Goat still has it messed up. That's my opinion. Goat be sleeping. That's what I think we're doing. Goat uh, be taxing N-words, according to uh, <laughs> EDF iPod. EDF iPod. Oh, EKF iPod. Oh, sorry. Juju man. Yo, I meant real fur. Like, it's not ethical to produce slash wear real fur in 2019. Haha. Ha. No hate, though. I didn't take any hate, bro. No big deal. Nah. No big deal. Rocky Contreras. What up, Rock? Yo, I'm in the cast, fellas. Keep it going strong. Been in since right after the fire, I think, bro. And love y'all's growth. Happy New Year, fellas. More good things to come. Thank you, Rocky. Rocky and I are best yeah. friends. Like more. that guy. Should have yeah. got him the. It's the rock. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's the rock, baby. Hey, yeah, we need to we need to get that Patreon. We need to get everybody going. sound bites. <laughs> There's so many good ones. Custom sound bites, man, for people. Yeah. You, we'll we'll do it together. You and I, we can all uh, as a collective, we'll choose your sound bite if you're subscribed to that Patreon. Uh, except tier. except status serigraph. We got to use Nickelback. Look at this serigraph. <laughs> yeah, we got to do that. One. <laughs> Every time it ever makes me laugh. Uh. Con Lee, two dollars into the super chat. Thank you for donating, my man. Yes, Con. I was getting. You know, I was gonna shoot anyways, but now thank you. I'm shoot. Hit that two dollars, doubt. He says, nope, "Oh my goodness, that was the worst air ball of the season." Good, that was bad. Dang it! That was the worst one of 20. Oh, it's 2020. Thanks. Oh, I thought we were gonna. Leave. Let's leave that in 2019. Yeah, let's, I already did. <laughs> let's leave that. Uh, he says, "Where is the crew's deporting from?" LA, uh, I, I fly into LAX, but... Wouldn't it be Newport Beach? I think it's Newport Beach. I think, because that's where mine... I think uh, it is. Yeah. I think it's Newport Beach. Somewhere around there. Uh, did you guys see the Jordan 1 low Black History Month? No, I haven't seen it yet. Let's check that out. People who freak out over white outsoles are my favorite kind of crazy. Wear your shoes. That's, <laughs> that's funny. true. Love it. Um, cool, fellas. That's uh, That ends the YouTube comments. I think that kind of wraps up the show for, th for today. Mm-hmm. Thank you to everybody that participated in the chat, man. Thank you to everybody that came through and donated on the stream. Much Appreciate love. you guys. I think the show was good today, man. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Nice, nice tight show. Two hour show. You bet. Um, Dude, I'm on my way to maybe pick up a new car. Oh, are you really? I'm thinking about getting out of my lease, man. The gas mileage is atrocious on it. Um, it's a little too big for what I need. I'm not using it for f as much four wheel drive. Uh, there is a new vehicle out there called the 2020 Toyota RAV4 TRD Pro. Nice. Little smaller, gas mileage is doubled. My payments would be a little less. Tech. So, uh, way tech, more tech, dude. Tech inside, yeah. it's it's a damn computer you in need there. That, bro. I'm you looking need. forward to it. You got the Android Play, you got the Apple Play, CarPlay, all that shit. So, I'm gonna go test that out. Have it for 24 hours. We'll see. So maybe, maybe, less payments, new tech, love it, better miles miles per gallon. Love it. All right, man. Well, uh, I'm gonna head off to the cruise. The homie Jalal is going to uh, Cancun. Sir. Dow's gonna chill here in the studio. <laughs> you might do the show solo. You might, do you might just catch Dow on Monday. You might yeah. just Dow might just f fire up the mics, create right. the live. You never know. We're gonna get it hot. He might be inspired. Just he might have to YouTube get out the live crib from his yeah. laptop. I, I, <laughs> hey I, guys, Dow Antonio here. Uh, what were you gonna say? Hey, um, it's hard telling. Oh, uh, go ahead. No, I, don't e I don't even know. I was probably gonna I'll, make a joke about Robin whooping my ass and me coming to do live. So feel free to donate. <laughs> I don't know something like that. But go on. I was just gonna say that I uh, I tweeted the link for all the shoes, so it's up now. If you guys want to check that out, I got multiple sizes available, and there there's some some good shoes in there. There's some oh, gems Jalal's, in there. Access to Jalal's personal collection. Wow, here we go. It's the majority. Make the sure majority you're following him on collection. Twitter. Was it Jalal Suli? Yeah, J, J A L A L S U L L Y. Jalal Suli. There you go. Follow him on Twitter. He's a uh, personal collection is up for grabs there. Dang. Cool, man. Well, I hope you guys have a good. Uh, week next week actually week and a half I guess before we talk to you again but I will be dropping sneaker videos on the channel might drop a little vlog might drop a little cruise video uh, throughout the time as well so we will uh, get to that and in the meantime with all that being said in the meantime in between time you get yours I'll get mine and I'll see you fools the 16th <laughs>